again, I'm just cutting to the Spanish writer's room where it's like, so in that point, the lioness who he is not as attracted to as the panther, she lectures him on his overly generous zoning permit. <laughs> hey, guys, <laughs> what the fuck happened, huh? <laughs> we Noah's Ark is still at the top of the whiteboard, yeah, that we're doing this storyboard on. I think it might have, as the Americans say, gotten away from us a little bit. <laughs> Awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I want revenge on me. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? <laughs> Sorry, I had to take my fur helmet off. I'm oh, sure, sure. Yes. How are you? <laughs> Pretty- Thought I would dress for success. Yeah, no, I, yeah, it's going to be appropriate eventually. Yeah, you, you keep doing it. And also joining us this week, you'll know him from the Cognitive Dissonance Podcast or Citation Needed or Season Liberally or Lawful Assembly. He's Cecil something Italian. Cecil, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Super excited. I'm pretty excited uh, myself. And I apologize for not having written this into the notes as I so often do. But Cecil, tell us. What will we be breaking down today? Today, we're going to be watching Noah's Ark, which is a 2007 animated movie, full-length movie. Yep, kind of flew under the radar. You're going to learn why as we go. (laughs) And that's going to relate to the answer to this question. Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the cutesy fun of Disney Bible Tales, but you wish they had the subtlety and self-control of my internet search history... (laughs) You will love yeah, man. this movie. Yeah. yeah, so, okay, so here's what happened, and I figured this out about halfway through the movie, and it answered a lot of questions. This is originally a Spanish cartoon, and it was dubbed <laughs> into English, brought over to the U.S., so it has a Spanish sense of humor, and more important, it has Spanish religious sensibilities, which are way less prudish than American religious sensibilities. In a lot of ways, this movie treats the source material like we would if we were making a cartoon Hercules you know, or something like that. There are so many moments in this movie where I'm like, well, that's the choice I would have made if I were making this movie. So (laughs) although if it was Spanish, I would have added the Inquisition somewhere in there. Yeah, Yeah, well, but you would have expected it at that point. You can't do it (laughs) in that instance. So, yeah, we we actually had an earnest discussion at the at the beginning of this record. where We're like, guys. This cartoon was actually pretty good. What are we going to do? As far as God Awful Movies goes, it's really not bad. It really wasn't bad. No, they will, but um, trust me, we'll find something to joke about. Like, I'm usually not allowed to talk about it when I jerk off to our movies, right? <laughs> no, it has a whole <laughs> thing. God damn it, man. Oh, right. okay. I, guess no, it was bad. I feel like that All tells right. you everything you need to know. Heaven is for real. <laughs> he really yelled at me. <laughs> There's a reason he flooded the world before. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best to be the worst at? I would like to nominate it for best depiction of Noah's poop shoot. Not you, Noah. Well, yeah, no, that's on the Patreon. Noah. Yeah, that's on his Noah's poop shoot. It is a question that has plagued me since I heard about Noah's Ark. And there is graphic depictions in this movie of how poop moves through right. the ark. What and happens I cannot to be more ship? happy. They always leave that out. Yep. Yeah, I can't be more happy. At, at, at fucking Ken Ham's weird ark park, all they have on the wall is one broom. And said, oh, well, I guess they pushed it around. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. You know? So. Well, sweep, sweep here. Yeah. Sweep, this is sweep a rough there. looking broom, but you know, just like you do with poop. Yeah. You yeah. sweep it. Sweep you it know, that's how it works. So well. yeah. 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 Podcast listener, by the time you've heard this, I will be one day out from a promised coffee enema. And this is still the grossest poop I will have seen <laughs> yep. this week. So yep. I think so. All right. So I'm going to go with best worst wives. So oh. there we have the Noah's son's wives as characters in this movie. And the characters are literally inside out little girl, Eli's Lucinda impersonation. <laughs> sure are. And Senora Pets. Yep. It is. Mm-hmm. Yes. It, which just blew me the fuck away. As Because like there were so many times during this movie where I was like, Eli did this. This is this whole fucking <laughs> podcast was Eli's trick to get us to watch his cartoon that he made My back in cartoon. 2007. 
And yeah, never was I more sure when fucking all his impersonations started trotting out as <laughs> all the All my character. Yeah. Carl the Puck of Pegacorn might as well be the messenger <laughs> from heaven. I thought for sure one of them was Cardi B, but you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. That fits way better. <laughs> You remember when Cardi B was on Hot Ones and she was completely unaffected by the wings? That's the most scary, scary movie I've ever seen. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just needed to say it for the record. I'm going to go with best worst slow motion walk away explosion. Yes. That's right, podcast listener. Do you remember the slow motion walk away explosion in the Noah's Ark story? <laughs> well, you're about to. Oh, let us regale you. Nothing has encapsulated the whole concept of best worst more than that best worst. Yes. All right. Well, I guess the audience needs a minute to load in two by two. So we're going to take a quick <laughs> break, but we'll come back. We'll dive into all the fart joke sacrilege that is Noah's Ark 2007. Well, I loaded in. All right. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. All right. You guys ready to do the rest of the podcast? Sure. Eli, is, you sure your voice is okay? Oh, yeah. Sorry. This is just the breaking through. The what now? Oh, like two or three times a year, the tears I haven't cried kind of burst through. And so I like scream and then I scream and I scream. My voice is just this for a week. It's it's rough. You do? Yeah, yeah. It's no big deal. I'd say it happens what? No, uh, once a quarter? Yeah, yeah, about once a quarter. Once a quarter, yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound great at all. Have you considered therapy? Yeah, you know, I've always wanted to give therapy a try, but my insurance is like really hard to figure that out through. And I just don't feel like I have the time to find the right person. And well, it gets Eli, really expensive. If that's what's holding you back from getting the help you need, you should try better help. What's better help? If you're thinking of giving therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Plus, if money's an issue, they have financial aid available. Wow, that sounds like an amazing way to get help I need on my schedule and from home. It is. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right, guys. Thanks. You're all done screaming for the month then? Uh, let me see. Give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Okay. All good. All right. I call together this secret council of the furries that get to make a children's movie every so often to make a bunch of new furries. Now, gentlemen, before we begin, I want to say we did a fantastic job on the Robin Hood cartoon 20 years ago. And honestly, we just have not hit that quality again in the same way. Yeah, I agree. I want Robin Hood to spit in my mouth. Yeah, we all do. So let's hear it, gentlemen. How are we going to get this generation? Okay, so so I was thinking, what if we got a whole new set of kids with a Noah's Ark movie? Hmm. Noah's Ark, the the Bible story? Exactly. All those Christian kids sitting at home, parents put this on, boom, furries. All right. All right. I like it. Yeah. So, okay. So how do we subtly incorporate the furry stuff? Well, I mean, the animals are on a boat two by two for a reason. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. They are. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's implied. It is already implied. Oh, oh, and so like maybe there's a handsome lion prince uh -huh. who only goes on the ark because he thinks it's a giant fuck boat for fucking. Oh, well, okay, Steve. Um and there's a dove strip club and and not just implied, by the way. I want to watch a dove strip, like a full dove strip performance. You know what I, I'm saying? It's not really that subtle. And anymore. then there's a panther named Panties who does multiple burlesque numbers and cage dances. I have already drawn the pictures of her. Okay, so not subtle at all. Yeah, I was thinking we go a little broader on this one. Sorry, did you say cage dances? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown and we're going to open up with some animals being wacky just in general, right? A little bit of uh, snake tug of war going on. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some pine. I guess it was a pineapple hedgehog. Is that what I was seeing? I had pineapple monkey, but yeah. Oh, so okay. There is definitely a point in this. Like we we learned this is going to be weird early on because it's just like, oh, there's a peacock. Oh, would they watch out for the snake and, you know, whatever. A coconut falls. On and then like this pineapple monkey runs up to fuck the pineapple. Yeah. 
and we're like, what is what is happening? And then the pineapple monkey gets eaten by a frog and then spit into a baboon's ass. Yeah, at this point, I wrote in my notes, 35 seconds in and everything is a hellscape. Cecil, <laughs> welcome back to the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously thought I shot him into his balls. I, I didn't realize it was his ass. I was like, what are those red things? Oh, that yes. That's his fucking <laughs> balls. <laughs> One of the multiple times something will get shot into an elephant's ass in yep. this movie. Yep. It <laughs> is not a true. singular event. Yeah. I guess I, that's true. I was like, are they just trying to establish that the animals were all a bunch of assholes and had it come in too? But then all of these animals and a dude get trapped in a net. The caveman, by the way, looks exactly like Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> like, Geraldo, if you're listening, you should sue. Yeah. <laughs> and the captor looks just like Sean Connery. It's pretty yeah, fucking exactly. weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, and then we cut to this ancient street of iniquity where bad guys are bad guying. And this blonde guy who's going to turn out to be God. Right. Is walking through the town going, and he's talking to his little assistant guy. And he's going like, oh, these motherfuckers just need to be flooded to death, don't they? This <laughs> These prices are ridiculous. <laughs> If you need an image for what they've chosen for God for this movie, think walking up to a club and looking at the bouncer and deciding, I don't think I'm going to get in tonight. That's how they've portrayed God. <laughs> <laughs> your least favorite bouncer at your local bar. Yep, yep, that's God. So it, it, it And it took me so long because he's, he's like walking around going like, oh, wow, I need to destroy all of this shit. And I'm like, do you have the infinity stones? Who are you? But no, <laughs> what the fuck is it? He's gone. And then uh, the the assistant, I had him as the Holy Ghost throughout my notes, right? I don't know oh, who he's okay. supposed to be. Yeah. I have him as short Tyler because yeah. he's sure. small. And <laughs> yep, yep. also, I know this came in 2007 and our podcast technically came after that date, but I still felt ripped off yeah, by no, this character. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So, yeah, so so small Tyler decides uh, he's like, oh, God, are you sure you want to kill everybody? And he's like, hold on a second. Who took my medallion? Yeah, kill all them motherfuckers. <laughs> he totally goes from zero to genocide in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. Totally does. Yeah, sure does. And so and then uh, just then, though, Noah walks by just mumbling to himself. Oh, it sure is a den of iniquity. I wonder what God would have me do in such an awful time. And God's like, oh, that guy seems all right. <laughs> yeah, that guy seems OK. <laughs> This is also where we get our first look at Noah. And it's interesting that the Spanish visualize Noah as the after midnight DJ on your college jazz station. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's also the philosophy professor there. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 For Did sure. they yeah. find some rejected cells from Princess and the Frog <laughs> and were just like, hey, free animated things. Yeah, right, right. And we should say, by the way, too, that like the animation, like compared to the shit we watch, the animation in this is actually very good, right? It's not bad. It's really not bad. It's a very Jungle Book-esque, mm -hmm. it, it seemed like to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Noah walks by God. God's contemplating that. And while he's doing that, Noah is going to go visit the green anti-Semitic caricature and his wife that lend Noah money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will refer to them throughout our notes as the Tenardiers, and so that is what they will be <laughs> in my notes. Well done, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the, we the, we cut back to God and the Holy Ghost strategizing about apocalypses, and the Tarzan guy, Geraldo Rivera, runs by and he goes, oh, thanks to Noah, I'm free and no longer a slave. And God's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill that guy tomorrow so bad. So apparently Noah borrowed money from the Tenardiers to, to free... <laughs> random slaves. Yeah, yeah just Geraldo Rivera. And goes back into debt again. Yeah. Right. Yes. He checks on slavery the way I check on Just Egg at my local grocery store, which is I just <laughs> pop in every morning. Oh, you got more in stock? All right, let me get, take that off your hands yeah. for you. Off I go. <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut, we've we got Noah. He's heading back home from town and his sons are with him telling him that they think he's kind of fucking things up, spending the family fortune freeing slaves. Okay, so they have chosen to make Noah's sons a variety of different races. Mm -hmm. They sure have. I, I mean, look, I, I guess if you're going to deal with the ham problem, starting him out black <laughs> is the better option, I don't, right? I Way don't, like, because the whole ham is black thing, that comes up to, like, justify chattel slavery. That's where that right. comes from, right? The idea that he's a black. So I, I think once you make ham black, there's no rescuing it. There's there's no way to rescue it from there. You just gotta you gotta be a full ham denialist. You can't, in other words, go ham. No, no. you can go look. No, you can have ham in your fucking movie. That's fine. 
you just can't you can't black them out like they did. It, it they was, really they really went. It was full of very full uncomfortable. Yeah. You know why they couldn't have that character and the husband from the Chenardier couple um, earlier in the same scene? Why is that? Because then there'd be green legs and ham. <laughs> so, okay, we didn't mention that the other guy was green yet. Or no, I didn't mention you it. Did, no, you I, said did. Green. I did. I did. You I did said say, green. okay, yep. No, that was a perfect You nailed joke. it. You did. You it did. Was I nailed it. Amazing. That was actually Thank pretty you. fucking good. And I shit all over it immediately. So Thanks for coming to the podcast, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. That's so, it. We did it. I peaked. So then we we get home and we meet my best worst, the wives, starting with Senora Pets. <laughs> hmm Yeah, I say here that they have wildly different accents like a citation needed sketch where yeah. all of us <laughs> don't know what we're doing. And we just all pick a, a random accent and start yep. going. That's they feel it felt just like an Eli sketch. Yeah, it sure did. Yep. Sure did. And they're all complaining about Noah wasting the money free and slaves and stuff. And they're talking about how they each think that their husband should be the one in, in charge of the family. Right. They agree that they should murder Noah. They just can't agree who should take over afterwards. And I wrote in my notes, <laughs> Cecil, do you feel at home with these folks? This feels very Italian. This must be like watching the bear for you. I, I felt very at home with the Cardi B one. I yeah. felt a hundred percent. Like I felt like I felt her in my bones where she was <laughs> truly. Yeah. She was definitely talking down to all the other ladies and she wanted to make you a big pot of meat. Yep. That's yep. what she wanted throughout the whole movie. And I was like, grandma, give me a hug. <laughs> So, okay, so then we're going to go check on Noah and Mrs. Noah. Now, they like the Bible, they never give Mrs. Noah a name, so I just call her Lucinda throughout. <laughs> For the best. Well, I don't think it is, though, because the guy, that constantly means, like, I have things in my notes, like, Lucinda thinks maybe Noah has his head up his ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying... The two relationships are entirely dissimilar. <laughs> oh is my what god! I'm it's so often she's just like, "Wow, you spent money on that, huh?" And I'm like, "Wow, that's not comfortable." And then she'll come up and she'll be like, "Wow, you're working way harder than you have to all the fucking time, and should stop that before you hurt yourself." And I'm like, "Oh god, damn it! Now I, <laughs> yeah, a lot you're of that. Take it on too much, Noah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so as Noah's wife is coming to complain that maybe he shouldn't be wasting all the money freeing random slaves. He just wanders off. He's like, oh, sorry, there's a shaft of sunlight over here. I'm going to stand in that. I had written, I had written, do you want a genocide? Because this is how you get a genocide by walking <laughs> away from your wife like that. What are you doing? So, but yes, I guess God's called him to the light. And they try for humor here. There's a couple of times when that, like this movie is like actually funny once or twice, but that's out of like 30 or 40 attempts, right? Yeah, they really yeah. Bad at bat rate, for sure. Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? Like, the batting average is down. Mm. Yeah, it's it. the movie understands cartoon plus injury equals funny, but they've got no scale for severity. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, people are just catching their foreskin on a rake, and they're like, huh? <laughs> you like that? I do kind of like that, actually. No, that, that would actually be pretty good. Yeah, that was actually all right, yeah. But yeah, we have this They do whole, a who's on first bit Yeah, here. right. The, who, yeah. Are you who I think you are? Who do you think I am? Who do you think I think you think you thought or you think I am? Yeah, but, they, but they can't pull it off at all. They pull it off so badly that you can hear the voice actor who plays God <laughs> not wanting totally. to do the four beat. <laughs> Totally like do like it. Noah pausing while Heath and I do the seventh minute yeah. of a joke that wasn't funny in the first <laughs> minute. Yeah, he's editing in his own head. Yeah, he is a hundred percent like is. this gets cut mm -hmm. right after this. A hundred percent gets cut. Yeah. So God's like Noah, you're better than everybody else. Build an ark, and he's like, Yeah, got it. Build an ark, and he's like, Two of each animal. He's like, We're not going to do the seven of each clean. He's like, No, fuck no. We're just two by two, two by two. I, he says he says it, and I want to quote this. He says Noah. You are a good man, but not everyone is like you. And I thought to myself, if you're going to do a, an entire worldwide interspecies genocide, perhaps that sentence should be like, no one is like you. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, you're, you're, no one's you're, even you're, close even. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Right. It's like you're committing an interspecies genocide. And you're like, yeah, you're all right. Yeah, no, That's you're, fine. You're better He's than kind of like some of the other ones. You know. Yeah, it's fine. Top five. You've got a decent <laughs> wordle average over the last 14 <laughs> days. And then, like, they, we cut back to heaven after this. He's like, so, and he turns to, like, the Holy Ghost. He's like, so, how'd I do? You know, my, do, uh, do I do the voice come come through? Did I sound commanding? That felt weird. Are they talking through my diaphragm. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So then we cut to Noah's family having dinner, 
And I, I know we're not trying for historical accuracy, but the first thing we hear is pass the potatoes, which, of course, was introduced yeah. to this part of the country or part of the world <laughs> in the 16th gonna... fucking century. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Not a great look. Uh, that's amazing. It so pissed funny. me off so much. And then there's, there is a very a big nod to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Right, yeah, that's, that's why they went he's, potatoes. Yeah, they went potatoes because he's he's sculpting an image of his arc in the potatoes like the guy yeah, sculpts this is important. The, yeah. the mesa or whatever. Yeah, and so, and then, well, now you've ruined Close Encounters of the Third Kind wow. for everybody there. <laughs> Jesus. Well, wow. I, sorry, I spoiled that 40-year-old <laughs> movie for people. Uh, now what are they going to do? Rosebud is the sled, no, okay? Wow. It's the oh. sled. It's it's Jesus the sled. Christ, you're going to tell them Luke Skywalker's dad's name next. <laughs> Do you mean Anakin Skywalker? <laughs> Chris yes, Hammond. that's what I mean. Anakin <laughs> yeah. Skywalker's all I mean. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, but then there's also this weird moment while they're sitting around where the sons are like, hey, mom, did dad tell you there's going to be a worldwide flood and everybody's going to die? And mom's really nonchalant. She's like, oh, I guess we're going to die. Pass the spinach. <laughs> yep. <laughs> totally does. Mom is way too cool with yeah, dying. Right, can right. I say? No, very Eli attitude with it. Yeah. Shem at one point goes, no, mom, everybody except us will die. And her actual line is, well, finally, some good news. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Let me, can I tell you what it is? Sometimes Better we'll help. go to atheist conventions. <laughs> truly. Sometimes we'll go to atheist conventions and I'll talk to a person who's actually had hardship in their life. That's what this conversation yeah, means. Right, you know, his wife right. is like, he's just being like, well, you know, my husband got struck by lightning again. And I'm like, ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Yikes. So Noah finishes his potato sculpture. Then he goes down, he starts cutting down trees to make his, his arc. And Lucinda goes, hey, can I help? And he goes, yeah, can you grab me two of every animal? <laughs> she starts looking in his toolbox. Which one? <laughs> is it metric <laughs> animals or <laughs> imperial? So, yeah. So then we cut to fucking Wado and his, the, the Tenariers. They're planning the, the summer home that Noah's dead is going to buy them. Yeah. I guess he's just, or, or sorry, I guess what we've learned now is that he has traded his house to them for a bunch of pigeons. For pigeons, yeah. yes. Yeah, because he's going he's gonna to put a note on the pigeon saying, hey, animals, all come to my ark two by two. And he needed a lot of pigeons to make sure all the animals got one. Right, obviously, yeah. I like that God is so hard up for picking a single person that he has to pick a guy who's willing to commit like real estate fraud in a flood zone to this guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, that's, yeah. that's that's the best guy on earth is we have that yep, guy yep. who's not willing to put the disclosures in right. on the sale agreement. Right. Yeah, seems really close with his daughters. <laughs> oh, I like him. Private party. So Senora Pets, she's she chimes in and she's mad at him not just for trading away the house, but for not asking God for some good miracle shit when she had him on the phone, right? Yeah, which to be fair yeah. is a valid point that no one brings up, which is that God does tell Noah, I'm going to drown the world. And Noah doesn't say, don't do that. Maybe don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you still open to notes? Yeah, there's, there's never wrote any back and forth. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, I guess I'll chop down this tree. I'll get to work right away, God. No worries. Well, right, but she, but she's not like, well, why didn't he try to talk about it? But she's like, well, why didn't he get me a nice pair of earrings or something? While he was there. Yeah. She does seem to think that he really wasted the opportunity for Bed Bath and Beyond gift cards or something. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a scented candle. He's right, right. We're on clearance this week. Ridiculous. So, okay, so we pan up to heaven where God is now complaining to the Holy Ghost that Buddha has a better book than him. Yeah. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we have this like sort of wacky, like the Holy Ghost is. You know, they're, they're, they're arguing about how to start the Bible kind of a thing. Again, like with American evangelicals shrieking and running to the TV to turn it off, diving between their kids in this movie. <laughs> oh, God, I can only imagine. I used to work with this dude who was like really evangelical. And I remember I was sitting, this was back when I was working in a warehouse and I had a, one of these holy books because at the time I was sort of seeking, I didn't, I mm. had just lost religion and I d- was looking at, I think I forget what it was. It was a Buddhist book. It might have been a Hindu book. I don't remember what I was reading. And him, he asked what it was. And I told him, 
And he said, that's the devil. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, anything that ain't Jesus Christ is the devil. <laughs> and this is the guy, him. this is the guy who loaned me Highlander 2 the previous week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, beautiful. So, and, and what I hope is that the evangelicals watching this movie were a little uncomfortable at that point and they were like, all right, well, let's let's see how this plays out. Yeah, let's see how it yeah. plays out. Because the very next scene is all the pigeons that Noah released <laughs> going to a fucking pigeon strip club. Yeah. And and by the way, we're not being like, it's kind of like a strip club. No. It is a, <laughs> we watch a pigeon take off things covering non-breasts. Yep, we watch the pig pigeon take off her coconut bra. Coconut bra, yeah. 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 So that we are supposed to understand this is like, this is an over 21 pigeon club. <laughs> You're seeing pigeon flap at this club. <laughs> all up in that cloaca. Yeah. We all got cloacas though. I don't understand. Yeah, no, how yeah. Okay, forget yeah, it. All right, forget it. It's a real hole in the wall. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> at least you tried. So, but there's one pigeon. Thank you. There's one pigeon that's like, but what if the notes are real and there really is a worldwide flood coming? Listen to that thunder. And another pigeon goes, I got your thunder right here. <laughs> and farts at him. Yep. It's 100% every single long road trip I've done with another guy. <laughs> every <laughs> single one. Correct. Yeah. So I, I like this is where I, I I started to write in all caps in my notes. Who is this for, though? <laughs> right. Exactly. I think every story of worldwide genocide needs a little scatological humor, guys. I think you guys are being a little too hard. No, on like, it was right for now. me. Like that. That was yeah. my ultimate answer, Cecil. <laughs> Who is it for? <laughs> it's like it's relief for us. We've been doing this for so long. We need some fart now and again. But <laughs> one pigeon accidentally shits himself yes. during the farts. He tries to redo the bit and shits his pants. Yes. But isn't that what pigeons do? I mean, like, <laughs> what is the shit their pants? Well, well they, they don't have shit pants, everywhere. So they yeah. just shit everywhere. So they just like they don't discriminate. So they just <laughs> go when they go. And I, I figured he runs off, and I'm like, where are you running off to? Is is there a statue somewhere you have to sit on to do this? <laughs> what is happening? So yeah, but the good pigeon is going to take the pamphlets himself. Damn it! So he flies out to the to the jungle. But of course, he has a numerous series of mishaps and Rube Goldberg's his way up a elephant's ass again. <laughs> he totally does. He does. Yeah. And then he gets shot out cannonball run style. Yep. Right after that. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And then we cut to a lion getting a, a massage from a gay monkey. Right? I like just gotta back me up here, guys. I sometimes no, I just yeah. need you to say God, yes. Oh, <laughs> I wish I had called Cecil ahead of time and been like, okay, Cecil, here's the game plan for the podcast. We don't see that the monkey's gay. Okay, so that's the one. <laughs> no matter what Noah says. And he's gonna get loud. I need you to know he's gonna oh, he is going to raise his voice at us, and we need to be ready. <laughs> He's got to be mad. That is the gayest monkey. They they could have, they could did a very good job of caricaturing that monkey as gay. I was wondering, when they do the happy ending, hands or prehensile feet? What do you think? Ooh, or, or, yeah, or, or prehensile tail. Yeah, sure. Tail, you know what? No, I didn't think of the tail until you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think this is an ape and therefore wouldn't have a prehensile tail. But yeah, like it's oh. a, since we said monkey already. Yeah, that's yeah. the part of it that doesn't yeah. make sense. No, exactly. Other than that. <laughs> We've we've sussed out the one piece. Yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of the fucking biology making no sense, because then we cut to like, so the pigeon is just about to fly in and give a pamphlet to the fucking gay monkey masseuse. But he, he closes the window and, and the pigeon slams against it. And so he's laying there all crumbled when this bipedal lioness walks by and she's like, oh, I wonder if he's carrying any important pamphlets. Right. Yep. So she reads the letter. She's like, oh, I better take this to the king. Then we cut back to the monkey sex worker and the lion <laughs> prince is a thing I wrote in my notes today, Cecil. Jesus, uh, yeah. it's a weird fucking, weird fucking job I got, man. Weird week. So <laughs> weird week. So, but the lion prince, though, this is very important. He gets the right half of the pamphlet mm -hmm. and it sort of got this mad fold in thing where what he sees is that this is a invitation for animals to come aboard a fuck cruise. <laughs> 
is 100% yep. what he thinks it's going to be. He thinks it's a fuck cruise. Yeah, it's it's a very, very, very cheap carnival cruise on clearance. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right, yeah, that's what he's expecting. A.K.A. a carnival cruise. <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever been like my first choice for cruise ship carnival. Yeah, no. Why? I'm a big fan of stomach flus. I'll tell you. <laughs> I love rotavirus. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but so okay, so now the Lion King has learned about the coming flood. And he's like, oh wow, we have to send two lions. And his son comes in. And he goes, I want to go. I want to go on the boat. And he goes, okay, well, there's one. I feel like it would be hard to find volunteers. They act like, oh, wow, he's so responsible volunteering to be the only one of us that doesn't die. But also, doesn't he audition by giving a series of hip thrusts to say he wants to like go on this cruise and he's like humping the air yes, at this he point? I feel like it should have keyed dead in that maybe he didn't understand what was happening, right? <laughs> I feel like if you're doing an Armageddon and someone's air humping to show their readiness for it, they're either not <laughs> mentally stable enough for the Armageddon situation or their head's not in the game. You know what I'm saying? Right, you no, know, that's fair. That's fair. So we, so we cut to Noah working on his arc and Lucinda comes out to tell him that he's working too much and he needs to take more time for himself. And I'm like, gonna have I a heart attack. Call him Lucinda. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, I, I ain't making it to 700. I'll tell you that shit. Uh, so, but then the Lion King now has requested a meeting with all the animals. So we cut to a couple of Jewish polar bears complaining about being in a jungle. And again, I wish I had called Cecil ahead of time to say we hadn't seen <laughs> they're that. They're not but. Jewish. So whatever you say, they're not Jewish. These polar bears are real. This movie contains the Tenardiers, and I was like, nope, those are the Jews. <laughs> those are the Jews. Okay, and here's how you know those are the Jews. The polar bears are having... Noah, back me up. Uh -huh. You know this yep, to be true. Yep. The polar bears are are having the exact conversation Noah overheard two people leaving my wedding having. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hot it in there, so I was gonna I die. <laughs> <laughs> Never again in my life such a shanda. I'm a polar so bear. Uh, it really is, man. It's an old Jewish couple arguing about the thermostat, man. It that totally is was. Mm -hmm. and, and the, and the guy polar bear going, I should never listen to you again when you <laughs> told me to go somewhere. Then you say. Oh, my God. So, yeah. And then we cut to the Lion Queen buttering her husband up for some oral. I don't know. Oh, there's a lot of like, but you're the very best that goes on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this is where my furry jokes felt weird. Yeah. Right? Because this is where I was like, well, yeah, one of the lions is doing oral sex on the other lion. Like, I'm not bringing... <laughs> I'm not bringing anything to this party by being like, it's like they're fun. No, they're no, fucking. Like, I'm watching straight them. Up, yeah. they, they, the, the pigeon takes off its bra, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. It's like if I jump on Tumblr and look up some furry porn and I'm like, the animals are, that's just seeing with your eyes. <laughs> I was trying to come up with anti-jokes about what they could be doing that isn't cunnilingus in this moment, right? <laughs> so she lost an M&M. He's trying to find it. Nothing's coming to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you're doing it wrong. So, okay. Cecil gets it. So then we cut to Zero. He's getting ready for his fuck cruise. And I guess the gay monkey masseuse is always also bringing his partner. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We get to meet the gay monkey partner. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. One of the Beatles, I think. And like all gay best friends, she is a butch, soft-spoken lesbian. Yep. So, you know, it's all coming together is what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, and then we cut to the meeting of the animals, and I love this scene so much because we've seen this before, but never on this grand a scale, where like you can tell from the front of the crowd to the back of the crowd when the artists were like, oh, fuck this. Oh, man. Right? That's so many animals. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking Jesus. Um, <laughs> Just put some stick figures in there. Yeah, they right, won't right. Come yeah, on. You know, get, get Donald Trump to AI and some more of them in the back or something. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so the Lion King is like, all right, good news, bad news. Everyone's going to die except y'all. Yeah, people in this room. Right. <laughs> Everyone cheer now. Yeah. yeah. 
And then, okay, so this is actually pretty good. There's a unicorn that's like, this is bullshit. I like this. Right? And I the like dragon this. is like, yeah, this is bullshit. We don't believe you. What was the other thing? I don't know. There was, a, big, was it Ludo from Labyrinth? Maybe it that was like, like Ludo a, from Labyrinth. I don't know what it was. I couldn't figure it out. I, I was thinking maybe there was like a Spanish Yeti or something that we, we weren't oh, familiar with. Oh, you know with. what? It's probably cultural. You're probably yeah, right. Yeah, I was thinking Abominable Snowman. That's where my head was at. All okay, right, all, right. all right, yeah. So yeah, so and also does uh, that some of the animals had coins pressed into their chests. Did anyone else notice that? And does anyone know why? She gave the polar bear one too, yeah, but I can't. Think, yeah, it's a badge. I guess she gives them a badge at the beginning. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, all right. But they definitely stuck to the badges way longer than I, the movie watcher, fucking remembered that. So I was like, why are some of them tagged? Yeah, is this like a wilderness <laughs> thing? Right. So, but then there's there's suddenly a, there's a burst of thunder and everybody goes to the ark. And I'm like, you know, I bet Noah had to deal. Like every time it's sprinkled for the days leading up to that, everybody is all the animals keep showing up. To the yard. No, stop. Not, I'll, I'll tell, tell you, you guys. Guys. Calm down. Settle down. <laughs> so, but on this way out, the Lion King is stopped by the Tiger King. As fuck, not that Tiger King. Sorry. <laughs> Different Tiger King. Yeah. <laughs> a, yeah. A, a tiger who is a king. And he's like, hey, so um, who's going to lead this animal? Obviously, you're too old to go. You're going to die. So who's leading this expedition? I hope it's not your shit son, huh? <laughs> Yeah, the, the tiger is definitely going to kill the kid. And they're, it's, he's literally explaining his plan to the parents. And like, well, we certainly shouldn't mention that to him. Anyway, let's get that blowy going. What do you say? Yeah. yeah. We'll go behind this curtain. <laughs> We're going to die in a couple hours anyway. So might as well. Yeah, the tiger's like, oh, your son is leading it. Well, I sure hope nobody has to overthrow him and destroy your dynasty. Ba Kill later. him and disembowel him and <laughs> yes. then eat what's in there. <laughs> sure hope that doesn't happen. That would suck. I would never murder your son. <laughs> what? Nothing. I was, just, I was talking about what I would never do. I just thought you might like to know that. All right. Well, it looks like we have ourselves a villain other than the guy who's going to murder all the puppies on a whim. So we're going to pause for a quick break, but we'll be back in a puppy. minute with even more of... Noah's Ark, 2007. All right, so the next ad is for Raycons, right? Oh, uh, we're, we're not doing that one. You're not? I thought you guys loved your Raycons. Oh, we do. When Raycons became a sponsor, they sent us a set to try, and we loved them so much our wives stole them. The ultimate compliment. So then why aren't you doing the ad? Uh, because, Cecil, they just launched their upgraded model of their best-selling everyday earbuds. Upgraded? With Raycon's upgraded everyday earbuds, you can also get active noise cancellation, ergonomic design, and multi-point connectivity that lets you pair with two devices at once. Yeah, and they're available in a variety of vibrant new colors to complement any and all skin tones. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to just advertise those. Those really sound pretty great. Uh, because, Cecil, Raycon sent us pairs to try, and if we talk about it on the show, our wives will strike again. Yeah, like hawks from the sky. I see. Well, couldn't you just um, buy some? Of course, Cecil. Why, we could just go to buyraycon.com slash gam today and get 15% off our Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right. We'd get 15% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash gam. That's buyraycon.com slash gam. All right. Well, good luck hiding your, uh, your earbuds. Shh, not so loud. Like hawks, Cecil. Hawks. <laughs> hey, Chris, Dave, you guys got a second? Sure, sure, boss. What's up? I was just looking at the asset folder and I see these uh, winking donkey files. What are these? Oh, yeah. Oh, so that's just a little joke we're putting in the movie. We were thinking like in the background of one of the scenes, another animal is coming out of the donkey's room and he's sort of like, huh? Huh? Oh, um, okay, sure. I... I mean, I guess that's a funny bit to put in the movie once, like an Easter egg for adults then. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, but we, we put it in more than once, though. Really? The same joke? Um, yeah. I mean, okay, but it's a callback then, I guess? Yeah, yeah. It's like a, well, it's a, it's a couple of callbacks, yeah. Hey, guys, how many times did you put the donkey fucking another animal as a joke into our children's movie? 11. Yep. You guys know that's way too many, right? Yeah, say it is too many. When you say it out loud, I now recognize that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and 
We're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Noah working on his boat some more. They actually used the same exact hammering nails into the boat shot. <laughs> they did. They used the same yeah. shot. <laughs> Hey, animation costs money. Come well, on. Right, they, right. they had a choice between really viscerally scooping shit <laughs> down an elevator <laughs> shaft in 30 minutes. You gotta do or, it. Or, you know, a second hammer yeah. and nails. No, you're right. Exactly. You're right. And they made the right decision. Yeah. Priorities. Exactly. A yeah. nice walk away shot of one of these cans on, this, on one of these girls or. Right. Right. Hammering of nails. So exactly. One of these girl yeah. lions. Yeah. One of the felines. Mm -hmm. So. Felines. Well, that what? Huh? Felines. Oh, because like females and felines. Yep. Okay, yeah. No, all right. Mm. We're there. That joke's okay, but I'm still trying to iron it out. I don't know why I'm doing it this week. Why? It's not good. What? I'm going to stop. I don't I'm, even know what that one. I don't know what happened. I miss heat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all writing that in our notes right now. <laughs> so, but yeah, but so Lucinda's like, hey, what are you, what are you, your kids working on? And he goes, oh, you know, they're probably messing with the sailing charts. And I'm like, Did you because you're going to sail your arc. Is that what you're going to do? <laughs> also, isn't it all water at that point? Right. Wait, like, where would it, you go? Like, where are you going to go? That map is going to be pretty goddamn basic. <laughs> it's pretty easy. It's all blue, dad. It's all blue. <laughs> There's one part that says there be monsters here. We'll go away from that, okay? Right. Well, and also, and God told him just steer towards the sunset. Yeah, so if that, sure. if that's going to come up later when they wind up in the South fucking Pole. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Just going to point that out now. Okay. Uh, but but then he cuts over to the kids. They're not working on sailing charts. They're looking no. at old folks' homes to put their dad in, you know, because he's lost his mind. That's kind of dark for a kid's movie. Admittedly. That's honestly <laughs> it's yeah. a little dark. I also, I love that that is one of the things that is cut from the DVD. I was fascinated by the like, what did they fucking cut uh -huh. from this monstrosity? And one of them is when the brothers are looking at old folks homes. That's amazing. Like they thought that was a little much for the US release of the DVD. Yeah. I mean, like genocide is impersonal and putting your yeah. dad <laughs> in a home no. is very personal. So... <laughs> Yeah. I think they just don't want to give their kids any ideas, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like, look, I'm about to tell this kid about the Trinity. Let's not let him know there's a place to put insane people that he Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, okay. So then we cut to the Royal Lion family and, and dad's getting onto Zero for sucking, right? And Zero <laughs> is upset because like he's got to take another lion with him, but all of his suggested companions have been rejected for... See, so what were they rejected for? Big boobs! <laughs> what? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> That's what, literally what the movie says. He's like, a, they rejected her for being too dumb and too busty. <laughs> they rejected for her, her for having too big of boobs and for being too, too dumb. Too thick. She had two C's, that yes. bitch. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. But it turns out that Kyrell, who was the bipedal mm. lioness that we met earlier who found the pigeon, she's the one vetting all of his potential com companions and she has a little crush on... The Lion Prince herself. Yeah. So she's signing everybody off and basically saying, no, 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 no. This one's all mine. Yep. This yep. eyeliner wearing lion is all mine. Yeah. yeah. And at this point, I was like, huh, interesting direction to take the Noah's Ark story. Sure. <laughs> Children's cartoon. Yep. No, the, this is, I wrote my notes here just as, this is a weird cartoon, guys. The Spanish are weird. <laughs> you know, they like, they jump over babies as part of a celebration. So, like, yeah, that's, we yeah. should expect this out of their cartoons. I'm just picturing the writer's room, right, where they're all sitting around and they're like, okay, Noah's Ark story. So, he is building the Ark. <laughs> Do you think that lions dealt with a lot of sexual jealousy? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> Put it in the script. Let's show it to children under the age of 10. Yes, and Zero, the Lion Prince, he says, hey, you know what? Fuck all of this. I'm taking big boobed Bruma <laughs> as my mate. <laughs> taking them titties with me. <laughs> and, we, mm -hmm. and we're all going like, wait, so are they actually going to draw a lion with big tits? Because we have no idea what we're in for yet. <laughs> right. If only we'd known yes. just what they were willing to draw. Yeah, it's still really close to the beginning of the movie at this point. We hadn't seen anything yet yeah. and really shocked for the rest of the movie. <laughs> then Okay, so then we check in on the Tenardiers who are apparently, they, they, they're checking out all of the new house that they bought, you know, from Noah. And then we have to cut over to the animal procession. This is the part Eli has been talking about a couple of times up here. They're in the palanquin 
and we can just see the silhouette of them. Like he's clearly going down on her. Right. Okay. <laughs> here's here's my challenge to you, podcast listener. What the fuck are they doing if not cunnilingus? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. In this children's cartoon. I mean, you know, yeah. like, again, maybe we're just prudes because we're American and they're like, no, in fucking Spain, all the cartoons, they fuck, the, they fuck each other. What do you they do say, when your lady is bored <laughs> Why, during a drive? What happens after the spaghetti scene and your lady in the tram? What? Yes, I do not understand. <laughs> Just ends? What the fuck are you talking about? I am confusing. They're missing out on the best part. They don't even sniff each other's asses. Your animals are bad lovers. Is that the problem? <laughs> <laughs> you must do the alphabet. You know what it is. It's that your A doesn't have doesn't have that doesn't little... have the N Y. You know, yeah, you know, the, <laughs> and the NBA does a lot of tilda. work, my friend. You yeah, got to the do the really, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, really You, you don't know how to that's roll that. your R's. Stay on that thing. key so, all day. <laughs> tilda yeah. will give you a third son. I would tell you that right now. <laughs> so, yeah, so Kyrella is walking with him and she's getting onto him for not being kingly enough. So she stops the whole procession and opens up his palanquin where it was just like, oh, that, I wasn't eating her out. And <laughs> this is where we discover that, yes, they have drawn Bruma with giant lion tits and not like six, right? Because if, yeah. if she had six giant tits, that would have been kind of funny. But no, <laughs> she's just... She's just got two big Two ones. big And the other ones are tits. hidden. Yeah. Right, the other ones are, the yeah. other ones are hidden. Yeah. But Kyrell says, hey, you got to be a fucking king about this, Okay. And then we cut to Noah putting the finishing touches on his arc. Everybody's super stoked. We get this downright Ken Hamian explanation of how there's actually plenty of room on this arc for all the species, if you think about it. Look at all yeah. these square feet. <laughs> he says, it has 1,300 double cabins. And I was like, are, sorry, are we using cruise ship terminology now? <laughs> <laughs> how many crew per per sail? What variation of Beetle was sitting there going, ah, we should have gone with an outside room. And this is... <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. It wasn't we'll, that much more for a part hole, really. Uh, yeah. So, but that, yeah, no, oh, I will say, though, this arc, because we do a big, long zoom around the 3D model of the arc that they, you know, that the majority of this movie's budget went to, and uh, way more impressive than Ken Ham's. Yeah. Well, home, oh, so much more impressive. Really, genuinely. Watertight, for example. <laughs> <It's> thicker. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of flood damage on this one. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Right. And well, and as he's explaining all its amenities, he says that it has a service elevator. And I'm like, at first, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Then I'm like, well, OK, all right. This story is not less realistic because of the elevator. Right. So, <laughs> sure. I had the exact same argument with myself where I was like, that's for pot. You know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> nope. Can't draw lines there. So, and then Jafet, his oldest son, is like, okay, you built the ark, but the animals aren't going to come. And the animals are like, oh, we're here. We're this, all, the, yeah. all of us are here. Oh, they're right behind me, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so then we cut over to the animals. So the animals are on the ledge. They're like my cats meeting new people, right? They, they're not going to come all the way down to the ark. You have to look away <laughs> a little bit. But the prey animals at this point, they're like, hey, once we get on the boat, how do we know that all of these predators aren't going to eat us? And I'm like, yeah, that's actually a really good question. It's, yeah, it's a really question. Probably, yeah. we yeah. probably should have raised this earlier before we started our death march to this ship. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. we didn't. We didn't think about it ahead of time. You know, it sort of slipped the mind. Right. But see, but the animals are in need of sound leadership, and they're just not getting it from this fucking Lothario of a king of theirs. Right. Right. Luckily, and and correct me if I'm wrong here. Luckily, no one notices that the animals. Seem to be having an argument. <laughs> yes, he's going to go to the ridge line to coax him in. <laughs> Shake some treats. Gonna yeah, exactly. He's got a handful something. of treats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rub his hands together. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But then Kyrell goes to Zero and, and she opens the palanquin. He's mid cuddlingus again, which go Bruma, right? Not a quitter. I like yeah, it. Really. Yeah, good yeah. for him. Like, where did we leave off? Right. <laughs> <laughs> On the Enye, as it turns the out. The tilde. Yeah. The tilde. <laughs> <It's> the tilde. <laughs> So, yeah, but then, so she's like, hey, um, she's like, hey, there's a fight about who gets to eat who. And I'm like, if this is a cunnilingus reference, that's great. I don't think that <laughs> yeah, it is. And though. you're an expert on that. Your who majesty. can I feast on? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, I'd like right. to feast on my big breasted fiance who's in this <laughs> palaquin. I'm a furry now. So, but Zero, yeah, right. This movie does. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. Welcome. I knew at Welcome, least brother. one of us was going to get got, but. And and really, we Eli was already. Yeah, this is the moment I became a furry. Yeah, right. Everybody, <laughs> right you point to it. Now. You point to it. 
Oh, you got me. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it was this moment right here. So, but Zero, though, withers in the face of true leadership. And this is when Tiger steps in, right? The alligator tries to eat the pig, and Tiger's like, I shall be a true leader. So, you know, the coup is afoot. Yeah. In fact, even Zero's like, wow, he seems like a good leader, huh? So Yeah, he even says, he's like, that dude's way better than me. I'm going to go back to eating this puss. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm better at that. <laughs> yeah. So, but then Noah comes and he delivers basically the same speech that the tiger just did. And the, I guess, okay, Zero goes to answer Noah. He's like, well, hey, thanks. And Kyrell stops him and she's like, remember the rule that animals can't talk to people? And I'm like, so Noah doesn't think it's weird as long as you don't get more than three words in. Yeah. It's like <laughs> Noah's like paying an extra. What what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. And then he immediately gains all their trust, like immediately gains all their trust and they start moving. And I thought to myself, I'm like, my cats, I own them. I feed them. <laughs> I take care of them every day. And when I pull aluminum foil out of the drawer, oh, they will yeah, scatter no. like it's the end of the world. How did he mm. kill a how fly? Did he handle just, this? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, and God's like, all right, looks like they got that under control. Pull the, you know, destroy the universe cord. And I'm like, well, that shouldn't be just out. <laughs> Maybe put something in front of right, it. No, right. No, you yeah, should have plant. to turn two keys at the same key time. Yeah, right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, but, oh, and Bruma stops to talk a little shit to Kyrell. She's like, so you're about to die in the flood. And you know why? Because you're fat and you have small tits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she totally does, man. She body shapes this other girl. She really, really does. It's, and I yeah. had a moment where I was like, am I supposed to? I had a weird moment where I was like, is that lion supposed to be fat? And then I was like, I mean, I guess she's like, sort of like, Full, more full in her body. And I was like, now are my beauty standards weird about this lion? <laughs> I mean, because it's not like I wasn't sexualizing that lion, but now I was sexualizing right, yes, it in it the wrong yeah, way. Right, in the wrong way. way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I have good taste in lions, yeah. damn it. <laughs> but what's really happening here, of course, is that we're supposed to hate Bruma because she's going to have to die so that Kyrell can be on this arc. And we're supposed to be like, good, she was a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. But then also, Noah has a weird moment with the injured pigeon. She's, he's like, oh, my pigeon friend. And like, there's a very, like, he's going to fuck that pigeon, isn't he? Kind of a moment. <laughs> it is like, it's like the cartoon. I know he's a cartoon, so he's not an actor. But it's like the actor playing the cartoon of Noah thought the movie was about Noah and his best friend, the pigeon. Yes. And so he was just really hitting it home in all of these scenes. And he didn't realize they like majorly cut the pigeon's part. Oh, both. maybe that's <laughs> it, right? Yeah, because it is fucking weird. Like there are like three moments where he has these one-on-ones with the pigeon where you're like, yeah. they're going to fuck at the end of this, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> He's going to push his wife overboard. Right, yeah. In this, yeah. So, so but then everybody gets on the ark and all the wives start complaining about it, which is amazing, right? Because he just saved them from a worldwide global fucking flood that they would die in. And they're like, oh my God. And he did it in such a tacky way. There's all these animals right. here. <laughs> Ew, wood. Look at this carpet. The, I, honestly, the misogyny like carnival is, the, is the most <laughs> biblically accurate part of this fucking movie, right? Yeah. Speaking of which, the sheep steps on a skunk who urinates on him. Yes, and then, so like, I was literally sitting there going like, okay, now we're getting biblical. And they were like, skunk pees on someone's <laughs> chest. And I was like, who yeah. then flies up an elephant's ass again? Yep. Yeah. And then this all, of course, this Rube Goldberg a series of animal mishaps ends with the hippo falling and knocking Bruma into the flood and she dies immediately. She dies. It's, it's water, so she just melts or it's whatever. It's over. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, they're using the Midrash interpretation of the Bible, which said that it was actually boiling water that comes oh, from below the earth, which oh. is why all the fish died. That makes much more sense. A lot of sense. Midrash in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. So, but now Kyrell has to come, right? Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to do it, don't they? So we cut back to the Tenardiers complaining about this incessant rain. And they're like, yeah, you know, why would Noah have sold us this house so cheap unless he was about to move into a giant ark? And they see the, the ark and they're like, oh, fuck, we need to get on that. A barrel and a broom. Maybe we can paddle our way out there in a very, very difficult path to, yeah, get, to right, the, right. to get to the ark. And then they get what's amazing is 
they get, they paddle out there in a, in a barrel with a broom and they work their way out there and then they get fucking keel hauled yes! immediately. Yep. That's like the way they used to execute prisoners. Like they used to <laughs> throw them over the front of the boat right. and then drag them. They essentially have to go through that in order to get on the boat themselves. I was kind of rooting for the water, but yeah, right. Well, yeah, because th that's the thing is that we, of course, we know how the Noah story goes. Everybody fucking dies. So we're expecting these guys to die. And we're watching them get keel hauled, and we're just like, "Wow, man! Did you couldn't really they just be dragging out the humorously? death of these yes. characters?" <laughs> right. Spoiler alert for those playing along at home: these people will not die. So, according oh, yes, to the they, Noah's Ark, yes, yeah. the fuck they will. But we'll, oh, the, I'm sorry. Yes, yep. that's right. They won't die until very, very so late. They, it'll, yeah. it'll take a while, but yes, we'll at least imply it. So, yeah, so we have this moment where they're like, "Oh, we haven't fully untied the boat, cut the ropes," and then they cut the ropes, and we're like, "Okay, well, what was the point of the scene then?" Yeah. Would have been a really weird thing for Noah to build an ark at God's command and then for him to forget to untie it and everybody <laughs> dies. Now you get the parting shot of the unicorn with its two friends sitting on the rock mm -hmm. as the water's coming up and being like, I made a terrible decision. Yeah. You guys had me made a, so, I made a really bad choice. I feel like you guys so are mad sorry. and we're going to yeah. do that thing where you <laughs> pretend you're not mad, but I wish you would. You're going to not talk to me while we're dying and it's going to make me up, more upset. I would just like you to dying. just like just talk it through and then we can all die together. Yeah, <laughs> so, okay. So, meanwhile, up in heaven, God's assistant is like, okay, so what will the rest of the movie be about? Right? We've still got 50 minutes to cover and God's like, well, now they have to figure out how to live together for this whole flood. It's actually going to largely be about animal sexual politics. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and learning is that cooler? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, right. So okay, so aboard the the boat, Kyrell is doing her best to take a leadership role, and Zero just keeps undercutting her efforts. <laughs> yeah, very important. Oh, and this is where we're going to introduce the star of the goddamn movie, the donkey with the fuck me eyes. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So for those of you who are wondering what the interstitial you heard in the second commercial break was about, in the background of this movie, throughout the rest of the movie, there will just be random animals coming out of their rooms accompanied by a donkey with the very clear implication that they have just fucked that donkey. <laughs> right. Yes. So the first time it's that he's coming out of the horse's room and you're like, oh, that's a mule joke and everything. But unless there's also like a donkey duck hybrid and a donkey panther hybrid and a donkey pig hybrid, then that doesn't work. Mm -mm. Right. I love that all of us caught it, too. Like every single all the first us, like, time. Every one of us that, have a yes. Did that donkey just wink at the camera? What is happening right now? <laughs> yeah. So, OK. So then we cut to Zero and Kyrell settling into their room. And we here's another one that we all have in our notes. So I was blown away by the fact that we all caught this at the same time. We all have some version of, wow, her ass gets bigger in every time and every scene that we see Kyrell in. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like man, that, she got a trunk now. Yeah. Damn, mm -hmm. it's awful. You can watch whoever was drawing her be informed by the rest of the animators that this is a furry thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like you could see that that person. Like went to lunch and was like, um, guys, can I ask you a question? You're drawing your animals. Uh, I hope this isn't insulting. A little sexy. And they were like, oh, yeah. Um, we want people to jerk off this onto our animals. Porn. That's this what we're hoping for. We're... And he was like, oh, my God, I've been drawing her ass so small. Let me <laughs> let me get out. Okay. <laughs> Where are the moms from Pixar? I'm going to get some moms Man. from Pixar pictures going. Yeah, this is That'll what work. I'm talking That'll about. Work. Yeah. So she's like, he's like, all right, well, welcome to the fuck cruise. I'm going to go run and hang out with my friends. And she's like, really? Is that where you're going? And he's like, yep, that's what I'm going to do now. But she has this argument with him. And she, she does this like 16 times in the movie where she t tells him that he has to act like a king and he doesn't yet because it's still, you know, act two. Still have to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. But this is where she realizes that he's only read one half of the pamphlet and she and he doesn't know that the whole world has ended. But it's like, but he watched the Blood I mean, happened around. Yeah. Him. He killed his girlfriend, yeah, and so his girlfriend died. He saw that, right? And they've been talking about it through the movie. Like we, we were just like, "Oh, the fuck cruise." Yeah, started with heavy rains, so not the greatest first yeah. day, but I think it's gonna pick up. <laughs> <laughs> but so okay, and, and we should point out that we we see the Tenardiers climbing their way aboard the Ark. They will be climbing this Ark for the next forty seven minutes of this goddamn movie. <laughs> a lot of climbing. Always climbing. But then we cut to the animal chuckle hut. Yep. Where the parrot is doing his tight five. 
He really mm-hmm. is. Yeah, now, he's trying. Let's keep in mind that all of these animals. Now, we, we know Zero doesn't know exactly what's going on, but all the anal- other animals do. They were there for the lions, the Lion King's speech. So everybody has lost every friend and family member they've ever had except for their spouse. And they're like, <laughs> Dude, we, we, what we need is a comedy club, right? Because this is yeah. weird without a comedy club. <laughs> You're funny. Liven this up. Come on, tell a joke. <laughs> this is like Edinburgh all over yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, they're laughing. Yeah, the no, yeah, I guess that's, that's true. true. I guess that's true. So, and then, okay, and then, in case anybody wasn't clear that this was furry shit, we meet, I'm not making this name up, Panty the Panther. <laughs> Sorry, what? The bustiest panther just we've seen yet. All tits. All tits, yeah. this panther. Yep. Hey, podcast listener, if you're doing something where you can't Google Panty the Panther, like at work, don't Google Panty the Panther <laughs> no. at work because that's furry porn. You're gonna get, you get put on. Yes. You're gonna you're yeah. gonna get on a list. Oh yeah, they're absolutely. watching. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she does this. She does a song. She's singing "I Will Survive," but she's doing it with all these "I'm gonna eat the prey" animals. Yeah, lyrics. it's a lot of meat innuendo yeah. going on there. A lot of meat eating innuendo. So then, but then the <laughs> the alligator says to the tiger, he's like, hey, what are we waiting for? Why don't we just eat everybody, right? We're bigger and stronger. And the tiger lectures him on the importance of maintaining political alliances long enough to do factory farming. Exactly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and I know that's like super evil and all, but like, that's what we literally do, though. Like they're trying to make it like, can you believe this fucking tiger who would like yeah. raise these animals just to slaughter them? Ah, oh, fuck! I heard it. I heard. Ah, oh, God damn it! <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm like, wow. He seems the oh shit. I see it now. Yep. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be in the bathroom with this picture of panties. I don't cheer myself feel better. Up. But during the tiger's like rant here, we're seeing this. Like we're seeing his imagination, which includes boiling a pig alive. Mm-hmm. A lot of screaming. Yes. Yeah. A lot of yeah. screaming and boiling to death in this children's more movie. than I thought. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. More than you'd expect. Yeah. So yeah, they're all like, "Well, Zero won't let us get away with that." You know, he's a good guy in the movie, and and Tiger's like, "Yeah, let me deal with him." So he goes over to schmooze Zero, and Zero's like, "Well, I'm not interested." Actually, I'm hanging out with my friends, and he's like, "Really?" Because Panty the Panther is right behind me, and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna jerk <laughs> off on them tits." See ya. <laughs> and can I say? Truly, like, I love you guys and I adore you so much. If Panty the Panther was in a social group that I could leave you for, there's no <laughs> medical emergency. I wouldn't exit to hang out with Panty the Panther. So he 100% drops all his friends for that. I, the one question I have. 94% of my family members could be dying in one room and Panty the Panther could be in another. I'm in Panty the Panther's room. Nope. Yep. Okay. Practicing the tilde. Good to know. Bus full of children and a, ca- a bus on a cliff. It's hanging off. Panty the Panther's there. You're walking away from oh, those yeah. kids. Absolutely. 100%. We're watching We're watching those kids go over the cliff side together. Yes. <laughs> That's what's happening. Does Panty the Panther have a a panthro the Panther somewhere? Well, okay, so that's, that's what I was yeah, wondering. Like I got, I have that much later in my notes, but yeah, we had to wonder what kind of cuck he is, right? Yes, <laughs> I. That's what I wanted. I wanted a scene where they finally get back to her room, and her husband just wants to jerk off on the end of the bed, and it's like I, that's awesome too. Yes. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I love this movie. <laughs> I love it a lot. Greatest children movie I've ever seen. Yep. So okay. So then we cut to the Tenardiers. They climb up into the, I guess, the haunted forest section of the Ark. Correct. Oh, yeah. This is the snake room. I had kind of forgotten about this. You're right. Yeah, there is like a haunted forest section. Yeah. So I, I'm like, why aren't the snakes just in with the other animals at the fucking <laughs> chuckle hut? What did they do? Right. One of them's got to have a tight five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. come on. He's better yeah. than that panther. Yeah. yeah. Or not the panther. Well, no. The better the, than the not better than the panther. Better than the parrot, yeah. though. 100% better than the parrot. Did you guys feel bad for the parrot as a comedian? I did. Well, no, because if he had to go after, I wouldn't have. Like, if he had to go after, but opening for Panty, that seems fine. After Edinburgh, I feel bad for no one. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. So, meanwhile, Zero is boring the table full of bad guys talking about his kingliness. And then Kyrell comes in to shit on everybody's party. She wants to know, did they even get the proper permits to open a comedy (laughs) club on the Ark? Where is your zoning paperwork? Okay. I need to see it right now. But he has it. Masseuse but Monkey is like, this? actually, I do have the permits. And she's like, oh, well, I guess you know, we definitely. Yeah, I guess wow. It's it's like, 
amazing amount of leadership, really, that he's taken that he already had <laughs> zoning permits that he was yeah. willing to. She's always complaining about his initiative. He wrote paperwork. Right. I mean, he made paperwork. Exactly. Yeah. But she takes him aside and she's like, you know, you're not taking this seriously. Here's the other half of the pamphlet. Again, I'm just cutting to the Spanish writer's room where it's like, so in that point, the lioness who he is not as attracted to as the panther, she lectures him on his overly generous zoning permit. <laughs> hey, guys, <laughs> what the fuck happened, huh? We Noah's Ark is still at the top of the whiteboard, yeah, that we're doing this storyboard um, on. I think it might have, as the Americans say, gotten away from us a little bit. Maybe we just take all of these cards down and start to get, no, we're going to keep, okay. No. There's just one guy slowly moving busty panther back to the top <laughs> on the side. We see you, Chris. We got it. You won the argument. I want her in the cage. Come on. Oh, okay. Let's put her in the cage huh? very soon. <laughs> the answer was yes the first time you asked, Chris. <laughs> we all saw the drawings. We all took it to the bathroom. <laughs> so, Okay. So then we cut to Lucinda feeding the wives and the wives are complaining because that's all they ever do. <laughs> They're complaining about having fish and salad again. God, it's so misogynist and shitty because they're the worst. And they keep going back to it. They're like, God, they're the worst. Yeah, every time. That's all we ever see them do is complain. Yeah. So and this is also where God realizes that Farfan, I don't think we've even given them the name, but the Tenardiers that are Farfan and Esther. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, but God's like, far fans on the ark. Oh, no. So, you know, suspense, I guess. That's not part of God's plan, I guess, is what they're establishing there. Yeah. What a weird part of stakes to check in on God. Right. Just like, <laughs> I don't, I don't like that a couple of Jews survived. I just <laughs> yeah, wanted no. to chime in. Did I miss, I miss one? I don't miss one. Yeah, okay. Right, right. So, yeah, but we cut back to the Tenardias and they've got a plan. They're going to pretend to be beasts of the wild. Luckily, Esther has brought sewing equipment with her. Sure. And fabric. So they're going to sew up disguises and pretend to be animals so they'll fit in. Yeah. Grass whoppers. But yeah, right. Grass whoppers is what they'll <laughs> name themselves. So, okay. So, but Zero is with his boy toy monkey masseuse and he's getting a massage I, can I say something brave? And I don't like to call each other out on the show, but I feel like there's a lot of mutual respect between Zero and the monkey. And Boy Toy feels very derivative. <laughs> and I just, I just felt a lot of affection there. No, you're right. You're right. No, it's 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 yeah, a layered yeah. it's a layered relationship. You're right. I wrote that note early in the in the note taking process and I probably should have gone you've back. You've grown. You've grown. Well, and the and relationship you've grew. No, yeah. you're right. Yes. You're right. I'm, it's I apologize. I just, it's just not, it's not all marriages, Noah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's a male panther jerking off at the foot of your bed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's actually cool and dope. <laughs> hey guys, is this a good episode or just a weird one? <laughs> so... You asked that a lot. Can I give you that <laughs> yeah. note? I know I'm giving a and lot of notes. The answer is yes, Noah. Yep. The answer yep. is yes. Yeah. So, okay. But a duck stops in looking for her husband. That's going to matter. And then we see the Tenardiers and they're, they're dressed up as kangaroo winged pig chimeras. They are mm -hmm. dressed up as kangaroo winged pig chimeras. Bravo. That's a, that's true. Way to pin that. I mean, you really nailed that. Thank Good you. Good for you. Thank you. And then, so we see them. We, we cut to the tiger. He's plotting his, his coup. And his idea is they're going to frame Zero and make it look like he ate one of the animals. It was ingenious. Ingenious plan. Yep. And they're like, all we need is an animal to kill. And just then the Tenardiers come in disguised as animals. One of them, I swear to you, the, the, the woman in this pair looks like, you know, at the end of The Shining when, when the, when the, Furry is giving yes, a blow. Yes, the dog blowing right? the butler. Yes. Right? One of them looks like that. And yeah. I was like, the whole time I'm creeped out. I'm like, oh, come on now. Yeah. Now there's going to be, now in the poop elevator, it's going to be a blood elevator. Now I later. can't, I can't jerk off to this. God damn it. <laughs> well, well, it's a little no, harder, but not impossible. Part, yeah. Not impossible. So, <laughs> yeah, but they run away and, and the bad guys are like, that's okay. We don't need to chase him. We'll get him in act three. So I guess we're inching ever closer to a conflict or fucking centimetering, whatever they do in Spain. So we're going to pause there. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. 
Will anyone ever mourn for the billions of dead beneath them? <laughs> Will they weep as they peer out over the endless ocean of bloated corpses? <laughs> Why is the single most violent Bible story also the one most often rendered for children? Find out the answers to something fucking else when we return for the somewhat abiblical conclusion of Noah's Ark, 2007. Sorry, I was looking at pictures of Panty the Panther. Yeah, no, I can um, Were you doing something? Yeah, I was jerking off the end of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's dope. That's awesome. We're all having a good time. So you're putting money on the bears? You got to put something on the bears. Oh, of course, of course. Sorry, guys. Did I just hear you talking about sports betting? I'll have you know that's illegal and those betting websites are super sketchy. Actually, Eli, thanks to DraftKings, neither of those things are true. DraftKings is a safe and responsible way to bet on the games that you love. Wait, I can bet on sports and I don't have to go to WePromiseNoStealMoney.ru? No, you do not. And you can view the line on all your favorite games with no sketchy hidden fees. Wow, that sounds good. It is. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code GAM. That's code GAM for new customers to get $250 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks and get one month of NFL Plus Premium on us. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny Four six seven three six nine in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call eight 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 seven eight nine seven 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 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, twenty one plus. Age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire one hundred and sixty eight hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ft ball. NFL Plus Premium offer available only to new and former NFL Plus subscribers. Additional NFL Plus Premium terms at NFL.com slash terms. All right. So go Yankees. Wrong sport. Gah, beans. Hey, guys. I've, I've got bad news. Yeah. International Cabal of Furry Boss. What happened? They're on to us. They're censoring the movie. No. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the U.S. DVD release is going to have a little bit of stuff cut out. Oh, man. Is is it the big pile of human and animal shit that we watch get scooped onto multiple characters? No. Was it the uh, Panther burlesque number? No. Uh, the very obvious oral sex happening in Shadow at one point in the movie? The multiple references to donkeys fucking all the other animals? No, no it wasn't any of that. Okay, then... What did they cut? Well, they, they didn't like uh, when the hedgehog humps the pineapple. Huh. Yeah. Other than that, we're, we're, we're good. Oh, okay, then. And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action this time on the rooster waking up everybody fucking drive time radio style. Yeah, he's doing a good <laughs> morning does, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, he does a good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but the duck is still devastated because her husband is missing. And of course, we all wrote in our notes, like, seems weird to mourn one among so many, you know, like. Did yeah. you guys catch the name of the missing goose duck? No, no. I didn't. It was Cecilio. Thank <gasps> you very much. Oh, no shit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, it's I all coming like, together. I was like, oh, I guess I am a duck who's going to get murdered by Cardi B eventually. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that next scene had a lot oh, of Oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> she could murder me if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'd be that panther at the end oh. of her bed. <laughs> <laughs> Wet-ass panther. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but, but upstairs, we, we see Senora Pets about to behead the Cecilio. Yeah. And Noah comes to his rescue, as I would you, Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, but I'll tell you what, you'd be fucked in this instance because somehow, and I don't don't even ask me about the geometry of this. No. Somehow he dives in and his beard gets between the duck and the axe 
and this thus diverts it. So if you're counting on my beard yeah. to get you out of debt, you're, you're fucked, right? I we can't both, you, you and I both, Noah, were like, how does this, this is not physics. This, this isn't, isn't how this, neither of us, both of us were stuck on this. We're like, you know, it's fine. The rest of the story we're okay with, but the beard thing, I don't understand at all. How do you, yeah. lead, first of all, how do you lead with your beard? But yeah, secondly, why would, why would it beard? matter? You got to whip it out, right? You really got to whip it. The whole thing you going put it on. in your mouth and whip. you spit it out as you go. But even <laughs> if you done? did, like, why would your beard be? If there's an axe and a duck, that's still not gonna. Your beard's not gonna help. Sure, doesn't do, change the situation. Nope. You got to whip <laughs> it all. You guys aren't picturing the whip out, and that's that's the issue. I feel okay. like I am, right. but okay. <laughs> So then we, we cut to Zero and Cairo. Tired of having this fight on air. <laughs> uh. So then we cut to Zero and Cairo holding royal court at the suggestions booth. So we get like a <laughs> montage of animal yeah. lobbyists. Yeah, zoning, <laughs> zoning arguments for yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. And this this felt, okay, this may be going to be too niche, but sometimes people will be like, hey, I'm starting a podcast. And I'll be like, sure, I'll help you with that. And they're like, we're just going to wing it. And I'm like, that. It's going to fucking suck, just so you know, because you're not Tom and Cecil and you're not as funny as they are. So it's just, it's going to fucking suck. This scene felt like we're just going to wing it with the animal suggestions. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. There's nothing <laughs> funny enough to be a joke. Nope. At no point. There's like, there's, so there, I like the marijuana legalization badger, but he doesn't have anything except that he's a marijuana legalization badger, right? Pretty typical marijuana legalization yeah, advocate, yeah. actually. Yeah. So he's yeah, a right. one issue voter, that's for yeah. sure. Yep, yeah. sure was. Yeah. So, but yeah, we watched that for a while. And basically, the point we're making here is Zero's pretty bored with all this being the king stuff. <laughs> they did have, was there a shellless turtle in there? What was the one slug thing? Do we know? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. he And again, like none of these were jokes. He was like, we should uh, motivate small businesses. And everyone was like, <laughs> because he's small? And he was like, yeah, or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just <laughs> fucking move on with the movie, man. Now you need answers? Get the fuck out of here. Okay. And this was, all right, again, like, this movie has been somewhat a biblical up to this point already, but this is where I realized just how bad it was. This is where they reveal that this idiot fucking movie thinks that the biblical deluge lasted for 40 days. Like that the yeah. flood lasted for 40 days. The rain lasted for 40 days. The flood was a year and like 11 days or some shit like that. I didn't know that. Thank you. Thank you for illuminating. I had no idea. Yeah, but you know I what? If someone Cecil, would ask me, I'd say 40 days. So thank you. You aren't making a goddamn movie about it. So I forgive <laughs> right. you. Yeah, I don't give a shit either. You don't so, even have yeah. this. Yeah, you don't even have this I don't, religion. I don't have a dog yeah. in this hunt. Yeah, but I feel like you would have found that out before you drew oh, Panty I, the yeah, Panther. I'd have probably. Labia yeah. Majora. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe. C-Doc. Maybe. Well, maybe. I'd have probably been busy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to a restaurant that Eli would try to take me to the fucking vegetarian yes! animal the single cafeteria. leaf of, of lettuce restaurant yes, yes. <laughs> they're all at a vegetarian restaurant and keep in mind this is 2007 so this is a very accurate depiction of a vegetarian <laughs> oh, restaurant in 2007 oh, right? a turnip we, we, just I, a picture took, of a carrot on the wall I got a flight of cucumbers at the one you took me to don't try to pretend this is it was like a delightful old. flight it was ridiculous wasted yeah and then we, we cut over to the, to the Tenardiers like still climbing for some reason they're fucking disguised as, as animals I think they could just take the fucking elevator now <laughs> right did, did, did they kind of look like what you envision when you see two angry, like Charlie Kirk in a fursuit trying to infiltrate a fur convention yes. <laughs> to be like, where's the litter box at, guys? Yeah. And he's like walking. <laughs> Didn't they seem like that throughout yeah. the whole movie? This is oh Matt Walsh's God. next movie in progress. <laughs> <It Yeah. is>. <laughs> <laughs> the sound and the furry. Nice. So yeah, so they, they climb. I'm the pun guy this week. That's yep. what I am. That's what I do, listener. You've been nailing it. Heath is nervous. Listen to this episode. He's That's worried right. about his You'll job see, he, security. He'll he he's gonna miss he's he's gonna miss it. So, but then, <laughs> like the fact that you couldn't follow that up with a pun about Heath is just yeah. that's proof that you're no Let Heath. Landing so, landing sentences not so much this week. Puns, no. <laughs> I'm all over it. So yeah, but but Farfan reaches the bridge of the ship, climbs all the way up, but then God hits him with a golf ball. Oh. Right. It's, it's, you hate to see it. You yep. hate to see it. You yep. made it all the way up and then just. Yeah. And then 
Panty comes into the suggestion booth area to invite Zero out for some lunch and perhaps a good framing. Okay. <laughs> At this point, though, I was like, are we going to watch like a full sex scene? Because you didn't know, right? We didn't right. know you weren't going to do that. Right. Exactly. So when he was like going to go with the Panther lady, I was like, look, I... So far, there's been no rules about this. If the rest of this movie is just 60 minutes of hardcore furry porn, I'm not going to have jokes. Right. No, it's going to fuck our show all the way up. Yeah. I Now, again, I, I note in my notes here that there is no male panther. What is happening? But I did suspect that maybe... He has worked his way up to the mule's room. Oh, and that's, there you go. Now yeah. we're seeing like a, he's pull, they're, they're, like the mule and him are pulling a train on something. Yeah. You know, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I think Eli was way more excited about that comment than you were. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, I'll tell you, we were excited in very different ways. <laughs> Noah was yes ending your joke on our podcast. I'm going to jerk off to that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. <laughs> This, this is so, definitely you know, a like mix. the yeah. most uncomfortable episode for several of our listeners. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say that right out of the mouth. So we cut to Penny. She's, take, she's taken Zero back to his room after lunch, and she sure hopes uh, he'll come by her place for a little fucking later. <laughs> <laughs> right. But again, like, it's a children's cartoon. So you're expecting, like, a, maybe I'll give you a big smooch. And she's just like, you can come on my face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yep. And I'm just like, oh, oh all right. Spanish kids. So, but Panty walks off and then Kyrell opens the door and throws a bunch of stuff at him for flirting with Panty instead of being a good king. She's thick, you know, yep. come on, yeah. get in there. So why not just do a three? You know what I mean? Sure. Like, yes. Just, yeah. Honestly, it, if the movie had resolved that way, it would not be more weird or less <laughs> biblical be shocking at all than either. how the movie actually yeah. resolves. Also, like it's a lion, like having multiple mates is sort of the kind of standard thing for a dude lion, isn't it? I, yeah. Yes, that's so, fair. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So we cut to the Tenardiers. They're sneaking into the vegan cafe and they've got a new plan. It's to hide in the garbage and wait until they're hauled up. I, okay. To the deck. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll allow it. What they're after. I feel like they could have just climbed the way they just climbed and hope God didn't hit them with a golf ball again. Just dodge. Now you know it's coming. Just right? move your head. Yeah. Yeah. So they walk in and Farfan is like, oh, hey, we should hide in this soup cauldron. That's probably where they put the trash. And they're like, well, she's like, well, well obviously that's where they would put the trash. So they hide <laughs> in the soup cauldron. Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't you put hot coals underneath your cast iron cauldron <laughs> yeah, where you throw we're... your... You throw your garbage? Your cast iron trash can? Yeah, yeah of right, course. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so so they climb in there and wouldn't you know it, it's a soup cauldron. So somebody puts a lid on it and boils them alive. Right. But this luckily is cartoony. This is the one time yeah. they do like a yeah moment because I really right. did think we were just going to watch their flesh <laughs> sloughing off from within <laughs> this bucket. There's a, there's a pig screaming next to them right. as they all right. die. Yeah, yeah. right. But everybody has plenty of them soup before we have that moment, right? That's important. Everybody yeah. has a bowl of them soup, and then they scream and run out of the thing, and everybody's like, oh, gross. Now, keep in mind, of course, that the plot of this movie is that, like, most of the animals are trying to eat other animals or whatever, but all of them are like, oh, gross, there were people in our soup. Yeah, it, well, it not only, I mean, spoilers for later in the movie, slash this fever dream we're all experiencing together, <laughs> but apparently... Tenardier soup also gave them all diarrhea. Yeah, it yes. gave them all that. Yeah, definitely had some sort of foodborne illness. Yes, they're all going to have the shits from this point on, and that will be which is very, very, very common on a cruise ship. Oh yeah, so, I mean it exactly. definitely no, tracks. It's, yep, that's it's scientifically accurate. This movie. So then, okay, we cut to zero being as bored by the plot of this movie as we are. Keep in mind that we just. <laughs> We just had to stop this thing cold to explain to everybody that their diarrhea is going to be a major plot point, <laughs> right? So at that point, Zero's like, oh, this is boring as shit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not happy. Either. Cutting back to the writer's room. Okay, so we have two sexy lions and now everyone has diarrhea. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to just start over? I know we lost the day. And no one wants to lose the day. Uh, but I have the word diarrhea written on the children's cartoon 
plot storyboard behind me seven times. Oh, man. <laughs> Chase? Oh, we're keeping it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah. So, he's with his gay monkey lover. And he's like, you know, I can't tell... Sometimes I think that Kyrell is the love interest, but then it only turns out to be act one or two. But now it's act three (laughs) because they've established at no point any reason for him to be attracted to Kyrell. This comes out of nowhere. He's like, well, you know, she's the I mean, you know, she's the last living female of his species. So there's that. But other than that, but also he wants to fuck Penny. So he's he's trying to figure that out. And then the lady monkey comes in and she's like, I have to take a massive shit. (laughs) It really does. It totally does. She's like, she's, you know, there's there's two other monkeys, one holding their mouth, one holding their ears, and she's just holding <laughs> her tummy. She's yeah. just... <laughs> shit, no evil. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, there you go. So she goes out to take a shit, but everybody's lining up to take a shit. Everybody has to take a shit, and now the bathroom is out of order. And they have these adorable little raccoons who are the poop smiths on this boat. Yeah, so They're the ones who are moving stuff around. And I thought it would have been better with dung beetles, but I'll allow raccoons. Okay. Yeah. I'll allow yeah, raccoons. Yeah, raccoons for the trash yeah. is yeah. good still. Yeah, that's it. pretty solid. It was also weird that they got on and they were like, oh, we, um, <laughs> we're crew. We're huh? the shit guys, <laughs> huh? Wow. Does everyone have? No, just us. Oh, uh, you no guys. Does a job. Okay. Your, your yeah. job is to, uh, to, to open for the sex panther and okay. then I'll uh, clean up shit. And then I'll. Scoop all the <laughs> shit. Okay. Okay. But now the Tenardiers, though, they have fallen after they escaped from the soup. They fell right into the poop shaft. Oh, and again, I have to yeah. be very clear, like, because this is not like a hear a fart noise, assume it's there. We like watch the <laughs> corn lined walls streaked with human feces. We watched so as their graphic. open mouths filled so with crazy. wet, hot diarrhea. Like the the amount of like visceral disgust. Oh my God. This yeah. children's cartoon has filled us with at this point. The only thing in this movie that is rendered with more detail and love <laughs> than this pile of shit is the arc itself. Yeah. And, and Panther titties. Those well, are that's, the yeah, only yeah, things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Those are the only things. But, but as a, as a young man who was sort of coming of age, during Ren and Stimpy, mm-hmm. this really brought me back. This yeah. was because right. this is one of those moments where you're like, this is so Ren and Stimpy esque, where there is a giant pile of shit and it's got fucking pubic hairs out of, <laughs> hanging out of it. Yeah. They're like, like, like Eli said, there's like half chewed like tomatoes and yep. corn, and you're like, oh, this is really fucking foul. Yeah. But it is something I've always been curious about in Noah's Ark, so I do appreciate. Right. Yes. I appreciate the attention to detail. What yeah. happened no. when scene. they got? the inevitable Absolutely. cruise diary. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that now the Tenardis are getting hauled up. So their plan worked, right? They're getting hauled up in the giant pile of shit that they're in to the top, to the deck so that they can like be swept off the side into the ocean. Feels like if you're going to make a whole complex pulley system for your elevator, can't you just have something that just like, lifts it up at the end and slides it? Yeah, Why do you have off, to right? shovel it? It could be the edge. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and then you just have to, but they have to shovel it out of there and yep. then they find the the two furry imposters and then yes. they have to and, flee again. Yeah, well, Senora Pets wants to eat them. Oh, that's right. She yeah. just found them in the shit. She just found them in a giant pile of shit and she's like, yum. Feels very Cardi B-esque, but go ahead. Yeah, okay, sure. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then they run on. You our- didn't watch that episode of Hot Wings, though. Like, she was, <laughs> it was insane. I think about it every day. I, mean, yeah, I, I get it. like soup. Yeah. So, yeah, but then the Tenardiers, they run around a little bit. They fall back into the poop shaft. But this time, Noah also falls in in a very, like, fly you fools kind of a moment. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> what's weird is that, like. The cartoon stakes of this moment of falling into the shit, we just saw because the Tenardiers fell into the shit, but they play this beat like maybe it's how Noah of Noah's Ark dies? Yes. Like in their version, it was like, and then Noah fell to his terrible death (laughs) in a big vat of shit. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, so Jafet is like, oh, I'll go down the shit elevator to rescue dad. But as he's going down... He hears a hippo trying to take a massive shit. Man. And he turns around. He's like, nope, there's no hope for dad. Everybody's, everybody's dead down there. No way to get down there. He gives up. They added that like the son of Noah gives up on his father because he hears a hippo taking a shit. Yes. Like at a certain look, I have no 
love for the Bible. I think we've made that clear. But at a certain point, even I was like, come on, respect the source material. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he comes back. He comes back up the shit elevator, and he's like, "No, nope, the animals down there sound way too constipated. There's nothing we can do. Dad's gone, and all of the kids are like, "All right, I get to drive the boat." <laughs> they immediately abandon Dad. Like, fuck that guy. Boat time. Boat time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm doing wheelies, but then Lucinda and the pigeon look over the shit tunnel and go, "Oh man, I'm really sorry to miss him." And the pigeon's like, "I'm going in," and he dies, but he falls too. Now the the fucking pigeon can fly. Okay, the pigeon very selectively flies through this movie. Yeah. We saw this earlier too. Like at one point he like get caught on something and he's falling and he does like an ah! And I'm like, you're a bird. You're actually a bird. So yep. thank you. I'm glad that this was consistent at least. It was a, there's a lot of the movie where the pigeon is sort of, there's little jokes. And one of the jokes earlier is where they're, he's trying to feed a spoonful of grain to the yes. pigeon. He's uh -huh. fattened the pigeon up because I think he realizes he's got to let the pigeon fly to land later on. That's the that's the conceit. Mm -hmm. So I think we're supposed to believe that the pigeon has gotten too portly to fly. Oh, I see. I think right. that's the... That's a lot of fat shaming in this movie. I Can feel I like that I was on the board. That was I really that moved up Very to the progressive. Very <laughs> progressive in a lot of ways. <laughs> You got yeah. cuck panthers. Exactly, right? right yeah, there's right. a lot of thruples yes. going on. But, but yeah. in other ways, yeah. Marriages of ways. convenience so, between yeah. baboons and their right. lesbian lovers. So so the baboon could get health care. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, but we cut to Kyrell giving everybody Pepto, right? And then we go over to Zero, who's decided that he loves Kyrell. He just needs to go and break up with Panty. And then he can tell, he can confess his love to the last living lion. Yes. So that we, we with that going on, we check in on Noah. He's fine. The Tenardiers broke his fall. He just fell on them. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you're like Farfan and, and Esther. I, what are you doing on the boat? And they're like, we snuck out of the boat. And he's like, well, if you just ask, can I come on your boat? I would have, would have said, yeah, yeah, I just begged everyone to come on my boat. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, really? You're going to bonk you on the head. Thank you. We're doing yeah. comic misadventure. Yeah, they knock him out because they're the bad guys. And then they climb out of the, the pit they're in. And to make sure that he can't get out, they kick the ladder that they climbed in down to him. Right? He like he kicks the ladder oh, yeah. away and he's like, yeah. now you won't be able to get away. And it's like, the ladder, he's got it. Though You pull up you the him. ladder. That's, yeah. that's a phrase in everything. <laughs> Ah, shit, I lost my keys down there. Well, you, ah. Uh... <laughs> so, you know what? But yeah, but Noah's knocked out now. And so Farfan walks out and he's talking shit. Now, up till now, they've been terrified every time they see an animal, him and his wife. But now he's talking shit. He's like, oh, all these animals, I would whip all of their asses. I don't care about any of them. And then he comes across the tiger and it's like, uh-oh. You know, now, now the tiger is going to get him, I guess. Tiger gets a strip of cloth out of him and then huffs it. For a second. Yep. Huffs which is panties. a little weird. It huffs his pants. Yep. Because he's wearing like a diaper throughout the whole movie. Yep. yep. And as the as one of them starts, the little one starts to run away, the tiger swipes at him, grabs his panties, and then gives him a nice good huff like he got him out of a vending machine in Japan. And then, mm -hmm. then they move on with the plot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it, but it's critical because he's going to need that chunk of his panties later. Right. At this point, there were no kinks outlawed in this children's movie. <laughs> right. Right. Because here's the thing. When the guy drawing the tiger was like, I'd like to draw him sniffing the underwear of the villain. You can't be like, no, that's inappropriate. Right. <laughs> right not at this point. Yeah. No. You're, no. you're blackout drunk if you're you in charge it. of that writer's room. <laughs> and you're just yet, you've got one of those staples that was easy button and you're just yeah. slapping it every time someone asks a question. <laughs> You're just so, hitting it with the back of your yeah, bottle. Absolutely. So, okay. So meanwhile, we, we cut to the sons. Now, as far as we know, their dad is laying at the bottom of this elevator shaft with a broken spine being eaten alive by ravenous predators or something, right? Um, but they're still fighting over who gets to steer the boat. And Lucinda comes in to give them all a bunch of shit about that. And as she's doing that, they break the tiller. Mm -hmm. Can't steer yeah. the boat anymore. Okay, come on. Just go get a fucking vice grip and put it on there. You'll be fine. That's how I steered my first car for four Same. years. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, but but meanwhile, Zero goes to, to Patty's room to have the talk. We also, we, we cut over to God telling the scribe not to make the Bible too fucky. <laughs> now, 
we <laughs> do. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is the conscience of the guy doing the vision board. On yeah, this thing, right, right? Yeah, right. This is the conscience of him. Well, that's the thing is that we've we, we've like we've skipped over a bunch of these like cut back to God and his scribe moments throughout the movie because they're not relevant to the plot. There's just too damn many of them. But like we have to talk about this one because at this point, God says, well, you know, my book has to be suitable for all ages. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, how many pages do you think that they got into the Bible before yeah, they stopped you didn't reading? read this, did you? They got three pages and they're like, well, I think that's all they say about the Ark. That's so. why the donkey's in it. Yeah. Because of the emissions of donkeys. Okay, I get it now. It's I all think that's coming it. together. I get it. All came together. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, they, they know their Bible, I guess. Yeah. They know. They yeah. just forgot how long the parts flood of it. is. No, yeah. They know some parts of right. it really yeah. well. They know the emissions of donkeys parts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that and Song of Solomon. They know that bad. Don't worry, guys. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> this book, 99% donkey come. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is what I promise you as a friend and as a brother. So then we, we cut to Panty. She's running from the room and she's like, Zero's a murderer. He just ate an animal. And as he's running after her, they dump some like tomato sauce on it to make on him to make him look like he's bloodied. Yeah. And then she runs over to it and grabs some and then displaces her enormous breasts like three times while they're doing it. You're like, that guy who wrote that, who was drawing, he really drew that out, didn't he? He really took his time drawing that out. Oh, he sure he did, baby. Like, he stayed late every night at work. Go, guys, I'm going to draw a little more panty stuff. <laughs> I don't think it's ready yet. She just rubs the tomato sauce all over her tits. It could not be more clearly. Just rubs it on her tits. And then she screams. The wolf gives him the the panties that the tiger was huffing that yeah, gives him to zero panties, and yeah, says, sure. hey, why don't you wipe the blood off with these? And and so now he's holding what looks like a piece of an animal that's all covered in blood. So so they make their accusation and all the other animals believe him because they're like, yeah, he was a fuck, wasn't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody liked him anyway. Terrible zoning officer, like the worst. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You would just permit anything. So, but yeah, so then... The tiger has the alligator and the wolf drag him away and throw him in prison, which apparently, I guess, as Noah was building this thing, he built a an animal prison sure. to throw them in. It is a carnival cruise ship, and they do have <laughs> No, that's so, true. Yes. Yep, yes. Yep, so yep. sorry, everybody. I just want to touch on this real quick. So now the king, he is thrown into the brig that exists <laughs> in the only animal section of Noah's Ark. Okay, you're all nodding along like I'm not saying <laughs> the craziest fucking sentence I've ever said in my life. You know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to find heroin and I will be back <laughs> when it is in my bloodstream. So, but as they all walk away, the panda and the mole, who have been such minor characters that we haven't even brought them up, lick the blood. And, and they're like, that's tomato sauce. Or they were, like, you know, hungry for some blood. And yeah, thought, Whoa, we'll take the yeah, leftovers. Sure. Yeah. But no, but they're like, oh, we're on to him. This is just tomato sauce. All right. Now we cut to Noah's son wondering how they're going to steer the boat now that the tiller is broken. Now, I, or sorry, sorry, they, they don't say the tiller. They keep saying the rudder is broken. Yeah, they keep, yeah, they, they keep do, saying yeah. rudder, yeah. But they mean the tiller. Now, I, I, I feel the need to point out here that it's an arc. The thing that makes it an arc is that it does not have a steering mechanism. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's why, because otherwise it would be Noah's boat would be the name yep. of the fucking yeah, story. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Noah's ship. <laughs> yeah, right. There's other words for that. So, yeah, so they're all worried about how they're going to drive the fucking undrivable fucking vehicle. And then they re they realize, hey, what if we just all prayed? So they all pray and God, you know, it's, he's down to only 10 people on Earth. He can hear the prayers when they come through, I guess, at this point. So he steers the boat around all these ice flows that it's around suddenly. I saw when, when they're there's a whole back and forth with God here where he's like not, he's not doing anything. He's kind of like, I want to sleep through the prayers or whatever. And then he's turning over and then they kind of wake him up and then he gets like angry and kind of just like looks down. And it reminded me of when I was a kid and my dad would be on an alcoholic bender and you'd wake him. Is that just me? Is it just me? Oh, that, you brought that, the mood down okay. now. I'm yeah, sorry. You made it a bummer. <laughs> Can I say you made it a bummer? Yeah. Hey, come on. You made this movie about a biblical genocide sad. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> We Get were having board, lots man. of fun. Yeah, so much fun before so, that. Look at the end of the <laughs> How bed. How dare you? Do you see Panty's husband pulling uh, up his pants and God. going back to his yeah, job as a firefighter? <laughs> now, he, now he can't even get a hard with yeah, a exactly. thumb in his ass. He can't even Damn get it. hard. So, okay. 
So then we we cut to Panda and Maul trying to explain to Kyrell that that Zero's innocent because she believed that he ate the grass whopper as well. And she doesn't she doesn't believe him until the gay monkey comes in and shows her the fake tomato sauce rags. And now she's like, oh, okay, so yeah. he's not. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Off this. <laughs> and <laughs> so, but just then God decides to intervene. So he sends a shaft of light that falls somehow on both Noah and Zero. Noah wakes up, he sees his pigeon and they do this bit. And this is so, because this is a stupid cliche to begin with and it, it makes no sense here. But they do the bit where Noah is now talking to the pigeon but Zero can hear him and thinks that Noah's disembodied voice is the voice of Lion God mm -hmm. telling him what to do. But this movie has God in it. <laughs> and God is presently <laughs> intervening on the situation, right? Yes. Like God did the light. So God is like, don't worry, this one will be a twofer because yes. there's... <laughs> A kind of farcical misunderstanding going on. It's so fucking dumb. But now this is where Noah tells the pigeon that he's got to go out and find dry land. So he sends the pigeon away. And then his buddies and Kyrell come in and break him out of jail, break Zero out of jail. Right. He apologizes to Kyrell for being so act one and act two for the whole movie. But he <laughs> promises to be act three from now on. So weird. And then I love this, too, because the gay monkey's like, we don't actually have time to resolve that plot line. We have 15 fucking minutes. Let's uh, yeah. <laughs> some of that's credits, get, too. Like, we got to move this along. Literally, here. they're in the middle of doing the like, you know, I've always loved you. And he's like, I'm so sorry, but we do need to take back over the arc because that is what the movie's about. now. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So now we're watching the tigers get ready for their genocide. They, they've come into the cafeteria. They're ready to eat some fucking meat. Right. Which is dumb because their plan was the, the evil farming thing, right? But but they're ready to eat some fucking meat. They can't wait till the shore. Come on now. Yeah. So they're gathering up animals. They're tying them up in advance so that, you know, the good guys will have time to get there. And and then there's also, a, there's a scene there where we cut to God and we see that God's asleep. And this is the movie's way of telling us, oh, God won't be able to intervene and help here. But like, God just murdered almost all terrestrial <laughs> life. You don't have to demonstrate somehow that he's heartless at this yeah. point in your movie. Yeah. Also, like, oh, no, God is sleeping is not the stakes layout that you think it is. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so, all right. So the bad guys are about to eat some animals and then the good guys bust in. Someone tell me what happened here. It's a haka. A haka. Okay. okay. Right. I don't know why. But the animals do do the haka. And if you don't know what the haka is, it's a traditional dance. I'm going to say these words, okay? Because it's my job. <laughs> you want to say them in a Spanish, a Spanish accent as it an is a traditional dance? Uh, yes. Right. <laughs> That's how they, it's a traditional dance of the New Zealand people that the All Blacks, the New Zealand rugby team, do before every game and most famously did before winning the World Cup in 2011, which was amazing. It's the most amazing thing that's ever happened in sports. But that's not the point. The point is that has nothing to do with this movie and I don't know why they do it. <laughs> it's, but hold on now. They do mostly the haka until they cut to the gay masseuse orangutan who finishes with the macarena. Yes. He does. Yeah, uh -huh. He doesn't know the moves Bad to the hot dance. He kind of gives up Mitch Stride yeah. and he looks like Hillary Clinton when they were fucking announcing <laughs> Bill Clinton at one, and she's doing a really bad, she doesn't know which elbow to touch. <laughs> right. He yeah. looks just like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, but now they're going to rugby for it. They rugby a little bit. But then it, we wind up with Tiger fighting Zero, Gato e Gato, and everybody pauses because they know a main battle when they see one. What was on the wall here? There's a sign on the wall that had two burgers and then a plus sign and then two pineapples. And I was trying to figure out what was on the wall and why it said that. I think. Am I the only one? Did I? Am I? Am I holding up the podcast with my weirdness? You stopped to check the menu. You were like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> What are they serving at this place? <laughs> I don't know that I want two burgers and two full pineapples. That feels like this a lot. They don't, you I don't have a want price. A light lunch this movie's kind of falling apart for me. <laughs> you know, that menu don't make no, no sense. Uh, so, okay. So here's another one, a bit of a double take within the children's cartoon. So Tiger is winning the fight between him and Zero until he threatens to rape Kyrell. I know what the fuck is happening. Yeah. I, I'm just like, fucking what? 
He's like, sure I'll does. throw her to you when I finished with her. And I'm like, what finished what though? In the kid's <laughs> mind, finish what? So, but yeah, but that's when zero decides he can fight back. But at that exact moment, the arc runs aground on an ice flow, interrupts the fight and all the bad guys heads get knocked through a wall. So they are incapacitated yeah. forever now. She might as well just run over and wave her arms in front of them and be like, they're not in the movie anymore. Yeah, right, just right. <laughs> Shush. So the Tenardiers, meanwhile, think that they found dry land now. So they're really excited. And then we <laughs> we cut to Noah climbing out of his own poop chute. Again, that reads like uh -huh. a accidental admission. Galiente. Yeah. 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 Also, given the sexual content of the episode so far, we do need to clarify when people aren't climbing out of their own butthole. <laughs> that's, no, that's, like that's right. That's, it's the yeah. chute that the poop came out of earlier. Thank you. Yeah, I should clarify that. Yeah. yeah. So all the animals are freaking out and Zero tries to calm them with his kingliness, but he makes them panic even more. Right? So they're panicking around and then he growls. And nothing calms a panic like a growling lion. <laughs> like a roaring lion. Everyone just, oh, that's fine. Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, he must have something important. I guess I will get in the line for the buffet. Yeah, sure, right. no problem. Yeah. So, yeah, but so he he gives his king a speech, and it's so good that even Tiger's accomplices are like, no, like he's obviously the king. The hereditary monarchy seems to just yeah. work. It just <laughs> works. Literally, Wolf from earlier who was like, we should have a trial, turns to Tiger as their heads are sticking through the wall and they've been incapacitated for the rest of the movie and goes, you know, I'm really a big, he's done a lot of growth. We're very clearly <laughs> in act three. Yep, yep. So yeah, so, but then the Holy Ghost convinces God to ungenocide the world now. So he he like turns the screw that drains the flood waters. Which felt like weird stakes to set up, right? It's like, oh no, Point zero 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 one percent of the population you just killed is about to die. <laughs> yeah, right, right. All right, fine. I'll acquiesce, sure. Yeah, so the storm breaks. He. This is where they mentioned that they're in the South Pole because, and I again, I point that out because they were sailing towards the sunset in their non-sailboat the entire fucking time. So all the animals decide to, to gather up torches like they are worried that Jews are going to replace them and walk mm -hmm. out <laughs> onto yep. the ice flows... <laughs> To a hippo singing opera music. Oh, Correct. Oh, amazing. Operapotamus. Yes. I literally was in the middle of writing a this music is a little much note, but then it's a hippo. Yes, it's diegetic. It's diegetic opera right. music in the yeah. Really weird fucking scene. And Noah, he climbs back out and and they're like, oh wow, you're alive. And he's like, Yeah, I was just fine. You could have just come down all the way and you would have found me. But no, you didn't. You guys look down there's big piles of shit. I was fine. I was yeah. fine. I was right yeah. shit. Also, there's two other humans on here. I won't mention it, but just nope. so you guys know. <laughs> nope, sure won't. And he's like, now let's fix the rudder that the Ark has that is a steering wheel. <laughs> Why would he know that the rudder is broken? He was down in the basement fighting the shit piles. Well, they yeah. ran into something. That's true. So, okay. So, but then Kyrell is like, hey, you know, these these animals sure could use some leadership. And I kind of get off on you uh, <laughs> leadershipping. So I'll be over here. And so then the animals decide that to free the ship from this ice flow, they need to take the many barrels of pitch they had on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, as you do. Sure. And then like pour it in a line across the entire ice flow. Right. And yeah. then okay. set it ablaze. Mm -hmm. I'm following of course. still. To crack the ice flow in half. So that they can do a slow motion walk away explosion from it. So yeah. that they could do and, and all of us were so desperately hoping the arc would just catch on fire when oh, they did it. Man. Just blow up. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, just explode. And then when it opens, the like animation falls away and it's just the writer smoking a cigarette that he's clearly <laughs> dipped in cocaine and he's like, this one got away from us. <laughs> so our story ends with the arc exploding. <laughs> okay. But that works. Go to sleep. <laughs> that works. The arc is free now. And the Tenardi is just then they run it. They, they ram a door open and they rush out. They're like, we're, they, we're on dry land. Hooray. And they realize that they're on an ice flow and the arc is already wow. leaving. It's too late. They can't get back on. And then they look over and it looks, it turns out that all the ice animals have just stayed on the ice flow now. The polar bear and the penguins and all of them. And the polar bear's like, oh, I'm going to eat those motherfuckers. 
<laughs> and that's the last we are ever going to see of the Tenardiers. We're ever going to yeah. see them. Wasn't a very big ice flow. I'm pretty sure he caught him. So, all right. So that, and then we get the pigeon returning with an olive branch. So hooray. So all the animals dance like they just overthrew the galactic empire. Okay. And Panty, I'm sorry, uh -huh. I just have to say it. Yes, you, you do have to say it. Panty is literally go-go dancing in a cage yes, at this party. Yes, sure is. Yes. Yep. She, they put her yep. in a cage so that she could dance for them and as their prisoner. The donkey is eyeing her from the he ground. Is. Yeah, yes, they cut point. back to the donkey going, so hey, uh, how long are you in that cage for? The donkey's like, what's up? What's going on over there? Are you a volume girl? Do you care about volume? Because <laughs> um, I don't know if you've read the book. This I was going to get some omissions. On, but I, I do know? get a uh, little bit of a shout out from the old G.O.D. <laughs> yeah. And then we cut back to heaven and God turns to the Holy Ghost. He's like, dude, you accidentally left the rainbow on. Wah, wah. Da, 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 da. And that's it. And that's <laughs> Genocide. it. Genocide. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then they're like, they're like spieling puns over the credits. Yeah. 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 No, they're they're like they're they're spitballing good lines for the Bible. It's like us in an Uber on the way to a live show, just being like, <laughs> okay, oh, you know what you could have called it. You know what you could have called it. Just fucking. <laughs> All right. So, and that's it. That's the movie. We get our credits. I I didn't stick around long, but I do have a question for you guys before we wrap up. If this exact same studio decided that they were going to follow up with another Bible story based movie. Which they should. Oh, yes, absolutely. Which story would you hope they'd tackle? I'm going with Sodom and Gomorrah, and here's oh, why. Oh, yeah. Here's sure, why. yeah. So when Lot's You don't have to tell me around, why. I get why. <laughs> yeah. We saw the no, movie. No, besides all the sex stuff. Okay. Besides okay. all that. Now we don't understand. <laughs> At the end. When Lot's wife turns around and turns into salt, all the deer stand around and lick her. Oh, yeah. Yes. While she's, you know. <laughs> all right. All right. Eli, what are you thinking? I'm going to go with uh, Moses' escape from Egypt just because I'm really excited for the sexy locust dance. You know? <laughs> Pretty solid. Solid right. choice. No, no, good. I was thinking I was thinking Revelations for the same reason. I went the scorpion horse locusts, but sexy. All right. So that's going to do it for a review on Noah's Ark, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to do this shit again, but harder. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we'll be headed to Boston. That's right. Yes. Beantown, USA. You know what that means? Marcus Mark and his action. <laughs> Mark's going to fucking be there. That's right. And his action reincarnation tenant ripoff thriller, Infinite. Oh, fucking my God. Infinite. Oh, finally. Fucking Infinite. I'm so excited. Hell yeah. Cecil, we had you on the wrong week, man. I would oh, love man. to bring I want we to bring you to hey, Boston. Yes. Podcast so listener, rough. we fucking begged Cecil. We really did. Boston. We so absolutely we begged him. tried to get him I, I yeah. eat a lot of shit on this show. I was like, Cecil, come to Boston, please. <laughs> I can't and do he it. Said, I'm no, to no, me. He, he has could. a family. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of which, I know it's too late to get tickets to see us in Boston, but remember, tickets are available to see us in Nashville on December 7th at godawfulmovieslive.com. At least as we record this, there are tickets available. So go quick. So with that to look forward to, we're going to make episode 472 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Cecil. Be sure to check out more from him on Cognitive Dissonance and Lawful Assembly, which we'll have linked on the show notes. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard or earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The evil merchants swam north and found the nation of Lamanites. <laughs> <laughs> the kangaroos, wallabies, and platypuses borrowed a dinghy or something probably <laughs> bad movie or no this thing definitely created some furries oh yeah 100 percent call me penny can i do that can i abuse that power nope damn it Does
doesn't even mention the fuck donkey. I love this movie. Yeah. The fuck donkey. <laughs> I'm glad we all caught the fuck donkey. The fuck donkey's the <laughs> best. So oh, the best. fuck donkey gets his own interstitial in oh, here. Gets yeah. his own so, interstitial. so good. So good. There are so many times I was going over the notes today. There are so many times where I'm like, oh, we all caught that. Good. Yeah, we good. Oh, I feel good. like we're less crazy now. Yeah. Her ass was yeah. getting bigger. Okay. We all have three all have that note in the same yeah. scene. But yeah, we'll get there. Mm. All right. Better help. But then we check in on the Tenardiers. They're sneaking into the vegan cafe. Polly Pride. And the sorry, I missed what you said, Eli. Polly Pride. Oh. So <laughs> Pride. Yep, Pride. Lines. Yep. <laughs> Group Alliance. Called yep. Group Alliance. Yep. I, I'm glad I brought everything to a screeching halt to go Got back it. for that one. Yeah. I whisper. So, <laughs> I whisper. I you appreciate didn't have that. to come back for no, me. No, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. So I, this is my fault. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.